Welcome to Watch, Review, Repeat. This is the podcast where two best friends discuss the latest in film and television and then do it all over again the following episode. My name is Colton Brown. Joining me is Andrew Meadows. Hello, sir. A long time no see. (laughs) Yeah, totally. It's a very meta uh, thing for me to say because... uh, Turns out this is the second episode recording in the same night. Now, granted, there'll probably be a bit of a delay between the release of the Black Widow episode that hopefully our listeners have had a chance to listen to now and this current episode where we're talking another Marvel Studios project where we're talking about Loki. Um, but uh, A shorter us, delay if you're a us, Patreon member. Just very short delay oh, if you're a Patreon plan. member. Very, very, very short. <laughs> um, that that voice you just heard, it is in fact our resident Marvel expert, Mr. Enrique Jaime, who uh, is also back. Back-to-back episodes. That might mark a first. Hello. Think. I think so. Just like a uh, the Norse god of mischief, I am back. Oh, oh very shit. good. Very good. Plug. good. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we're talking Loki, the, the, the latest Disney Plus original series from the fine folks over at Marvel Studios from the wonderful mind uh, of Kevin Feige and company. Uh, we've got six episodes to talk about. Uh, we're going to be doing a, a full spoiler deep dive, and boy, do we uh, have lots to talk about. Uh, and I'm excited. Um, talking uh, two Marvel Studios projects back to back in the same day. Uh, I, I it's mean, incredible. Feels good. It's, it's, <laughs> feels good. It's just absolutely incredible. <laughs> I, I, I will be honest. There are there are projects. You know, if you ask me to record two episodes on them back to back, there are probably <laughs> movies, TV shows. It'd be like, uh, I think I. I I, I don't know. I, I could we'll do something pace else. We'll just pace this out a little bit. We need to pace ourselves. But uh, but but talking about two Marvel Studios projects back to back, sign sign me up. Sign me up for that. Uh, and it's fun. We're hanging out. We're having a good time. It's the three of us. Uh, we're we're maybe a couple of beers deep in already. I don't know. Uh, I had I had some dinner in between. Yeah, there was a fuel uh, break. So, so I had four <laughs> Tostitos. God damn. Uh, <laughs> and and for those wondering. Uh, Andrew and I've got nicotine. Secured a source of nicotine. <laughs> so uh, that should not be a recurring issue on this one, fortunately. Uh, so, yeah. Um, by the time this goes up, I will be done with the bar exam, uh, oh. which is very exciting. I've been treating every other episode that I've recorded has been like, oh, it sucks and sucks and sucks. I'm just dreaming of a time where this episode exists. It's released to the regular listeners and I'm done with that. The three days of hell uh, are in the past. Um, so I'm sending good vibes for this episode. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just giving out good vibes the whole time because, uh, because that's the only way that I can, I can make it through talking about the bar is just dreaming of a time where it's, where it's in the rear view mirror. Do, so do you have anything so that's, to that's, say that's, to, that's your, my, to your future <laughs> self in the, in the timeline? <laughs> Uh, ooh, um, oh, uh, um, uh, oh, um, uh, don't beat yourself up too much. <laughs> a few things wrong because, uh, it happens, my dude. It happens. Um, so th- that's my words of wisdom for me listening to this in the future. Right. Pre- um, preemptive so. congratulations, then. Uh, might be too early for that. Might be a little too <laughs> premature, but, uh, uh, there's a whole universe of possibilities that could unfold. Uh, uh, from when I take it, so hmm. we'll find out which one I find myself in. But uh, uh, yeah, uh, who's got a, who's got a fun fact for Loki? Anyone got a Loki a, a Loki related fun fact? I got a fun fact. What do you got? Yeah. So the question posed at some point in the show, maybe I, I, I I'm not I'm not entirely sure, but the question I'm posing, anyways, is. What lies beyond time? Is, it, is that a fact? <laughs> or just a... I'm posing a, a question. Just a question. I have a potential, oh, okay. have a potential just... hypothetical answer. <laughs> oh. And um, the answer... Oh, no, yeah. go ahead. If you have a, if you have a solid <laughs> guess. <laughs> no, I do I, <laughs> If you have an answer, I want to hear it, but I was going to say... Um, I'm all ears. Just, I was just going to say more time, but it's kind of a cop-out. No. It's called phase space. And outside what? of our measurable, measurable, what we can measure of space and time, or space time, the space time continuum, as it were, is phase space. And you'll say, well, what is phase space? Phase space is literally everything. 
it's all the possible outcomes of the space time continuum. It's every, it's, it's every thing, just all the possibilities is what it is. Well, goddamn. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what lies beyond fucking space. All right, space. Stephen Hawking. We're, we're starting this uh, episode off with a bang. Um, yeah. So getting getting into some real deep shit. Some real, real deep cool shit. shit. It's fucking yeah, cool. Right off the bat. It's cool. It's a hypothetical thing. Uh, read and I I did not. I'd be I'd be lying to you. you read the papers. Um, no, I did not read the papers. I scrolled through the papers uh, on the newscientist.com, and they have uh, the uh, they have a big long write up on phase space and like uh, waves and all sorts of the fabrics of reality, and it's fucking cool. Um, and uh, yeah, it's cool stuff. If you want to get smart, I did not read it, so I did not get smart. I just know uh, what the first paragraph of Wikipedia says on phase space. Um, so it's. There That's you go. What lies beyond time, or at least our conception of time, as it were. So, and that relates yeah. to Loki because Loki's dealing with time. <laughs> There's, There's a, definitely there some time go. involved uh, <laughs> with, with Loki. Um, so yes, all yeah. right. Well, okay. Enrique, did you do? You, do you have anything to I, to share? I feel like you probably talked about because this is not a like unknown fun fact, but I saw the actual video for the first time, and it was pretty great. So people may be aware that uh, Tom Hiddleston auditioned for the role of Thor, but I'd never seen any footage of it. It's just footage uh-huh. on the internet uh-huh. of of like a shirtless Tom Hiddleston uh, just like waving the hammer around and just like pretending to fly, and it's amazing. So I uh, asked everyone to to Google this and uh, just yeah. Tom Hiddleston like Thor audition because I'd never seen the footage and it was hilarious. And I think they did the right the right uh, call with the with the casting. I will say that he's great, but yeah, yeah, he, definitely, he's definitely more of a Loki, a, a, a perfect cast for Loki. Uh, I mean, I, I mean, maybe he could have pulled off Thor, maybe, but he'd have to I bulk think, up I think a little bit. He definitely have to bulk up a little bit. To be fair, Hemsworth wasn't exactly the most swole dude when he was cast as Thor. Although when you look at him now, especially there's some set picks that came out from love and thunder and dude is just fucking ridiculous <laughs> looking right now. He's, he? he's, 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 he's turned into the rock at this point. <laughs> um, I had to look they, it up. They did, um, not, not quite as ridiculous. I, forgot, proportions I think it was on the six, uh, fast and furious. They, someone had, uh, Hobbs as Samoan Thor on his phone. Oh yeah. Yeah. Remember was this? It, uh, was it, was it Roman? I think it, it might've been, been Roman. Roman. Uh, he just had him as, as Samoan Thor, which I thought was pretty hilarious. <laughs> Holy shit. That's very good. Dude is jacked. Because Sam was absolutely jacked. Yeah. Yoked. I mean, in the first Thor, Thor movie, Thor. He, was, he was ridiculous. That's true. That's. I mean, he's 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 been jacked in all of the Thor movies. Except for Endgame. There's no doubt about that. Well, I guess it's not a Thor movie, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> Honestly, he, he was he was yoked under the suit. Yeah, we, we all know we all know that. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah, it, things worked out. Tom Hiddleston was meant to play the god of mischief, and Chris Hemsworth was meant to play the god of thunder. I actually thought you were going to go in a slightly different direction when you started with that. Oh no, um, because Anna showed me a video a uh, day or two ago of Tom Hiddleston doing impressions, and he did an impression of Owen Wilson, um, which, oh, which, was, which was funny. Pretty good. Um, so that's, that's another thing to look up on the YouTubes. Um, uh, if you're looking for, for some fun things to do, uh, I have a fun fact as well. We'll just, we'll just follow the same format we did last time. I'll close out with a fun fact. Uh, a Loki is actually a type of spider that, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm doing that again. Um, <laughs> so say I've never heard that shit before. That's pretty fucking crazy. <laughs> uh, no, I, I, I'm going to play it straight this time, even though I, I guess I technically did not. Uh, I guess you could consider this a mild spoiler for the show, but it doesn't really have a lot of bearing uh on the plot of the show so i don't really consider it a spoiler and i think it's 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 cool um loki as has been revealed uh in the marketing materials for the show and within the show is the first gender fluid character in the marvel cinematic universe and he is also the first bisexual uh uh major character i guess we'll say minimally uh in the marvel cinematic universe so uh the the series marks i think an important step i think in representation for for the mcu which i think uh certainly on the lgbtq plus front has been uh lackluster pretty lackluster yeah. um i think eternals will feature an openly gay character uh technically we had the uh, the five second uh 
Russo cameo as a as a, as a gay character in Endgame, which people kind of found to be mostly lip service. Yeah. So, um, and and again, uh, you know, does it really play much of an impact in this show? No, I would say no, it doesn't really. But it's it's still cool. It's it's something you know, and it and it's and it's appropriate as well. Yeah. Um, and not that not that you know any of those things would be inappropriate in any given point. Don't don't misconstrue my words. I just mean that Loki, in terms of Norse god Loki. <laughs> Get up to some 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 things is what I'll say. Um, for anyone that hasn't uh, uh, read or listened to, to Neil uh, Neil Gaiman's Norse Gods uh, book, it's fantastic. The audiobook uh, he narrates it himself is very fun. It's incredible. Uh, you can hear you can hear some uh, 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 stories of Loki getting up to some shenanigans, and they're very good. Um, but Loki, I think you know that as as a Norse god, really was kind of gender fluid, uh, and I think uh, in the comics, I think he. Uh, has been as well i think there's you know he's been able to i think be regular loki uh lady loki etc um and uh revealing him as bisexual as well i I think is 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 is, is obviously a big deal as well in terms of representation so um that's my fun fact is you know uh the the mcu is is slow to catch up i think with the realities of of the real world in in some ways and you know took ages for them to get a first um you know female-led film then we finally got captain marvel and we got another one, uh, obviously, that we talked about last episode with Black Widow. Um, first uh, black uh, lead character, superhero, and Black Panther. Shang-Chi we're getting just a few months, a couple months, actually, uh, as the first uh, Asian uh, superhero in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And so, you know, this is another sliver of, uh, of representation so that people can see themselves in these things. You know, for Andrew and myself, I think particularly, you know, it's been pretty easy for us to you know, see ourselves represented, uh, and basically everything we watch. So, uh, and, and it's been more of a rarity, uh, too much of a rarity and, and many other instances. So I, yeah, I think it's, I think it's a small thing, but I think it's an important thing. So, um, yeah, I'm throwing that out there, uh, as my fun fact for the listeners. So who wants to talk some news? Alrighty. Yeah, that's right. We have more news, <laughs> two episodes back to back, but God damn it. We have the news. I figured it's better to split it, you know, keep it keep it even handed between the two. A nice good balance of things. Um, so uh, you know, let's keep the Marvel synergy going here. Uh one division director Matt Shackman. Uh folks over at Paramount Pictures were uh were were were, were happy with what he did on One Division, evidently, as they have uh hired him uh to direct the next Star Trek feature film. So, um we don't really know much about what's going on with this in terms of is this going to bring back Chris Pine, Zachary Quinto, um, anyone else? There's one point talks of Chris Pine and Chris Hemsworth doing a time travel weird fucking thing with father and son, I guess son and father respectively. Uh, that maybe isn't happening anymore. Um, but uh, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it seems like a pretty big, uh, you know, step up you know i don't know about a step up per se wandavision was obviously very weird very out there uh and very good um maybe you know feels like a good transition point maybe to to go from something like wandavision and he directed all nine episodes for the record to to go to something like uh like a big star trek film but uh what do you guys think sound like a like a good hire excited to see some more star trek on the big screen uh yeah i guess (laughs) (laughs) yeah I mean, if it's good, and if it's good, I'll like it. I mean, I like stuff like that, so... <laughs> you like good stuff? I like good stuff, <laughs> yeah. So just give me some good a, stuff and some a, cool what shit. What a bold <laughs> take this man has put this on the record. Is, um, are they ever going to do anything with the uh, the Tarantino Star Trek film, or is that just never... <laughs> that! That I can get behind. <laughs> I can get behind that. Uh, yeah. I, I mean... Probably not because it's just too weird. Yeah. It'd be you know absolutely I mean? it would be the fucking first, incredible. It would be the first uh, Star Star Trek to be rated R just for using the N word. <laughs> I don't think. No, he, I don't he, think he never misses an opportunity. He never Has Tarantino does. ever directed a sci fi film? I don't think so. Not that I what can. What about a fantasy of, film? <laughs> not in like the classic sense. No, I don't. No, the I don't most think genre so. thing I, mean, I think it, is it, a western. It, it would be pretty right. fucking rad to see him in a sci-fi setting, and it would be pretty fucking rad to see him in a fantasy setting, like some fucking Knights of the Round Table Tarantino <laughs> style. That'd be absolutely <laughs> fucking bonkers. I would take that. Yeah. Um, 
As far as uh, Matt 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 Chapman to uh, to direct the new Star Trek film, we'll see what happens. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry, I have nothing yeah. more to offer, guys. I'm sorry I'm letting that's you know. Yeah, I mean, I enjoyed WandaVision, so I thought it was well-directed. So I'd be curious to see where this movie goes, but they, they probably have a good director in their hands. Come to, to, to on! Me. <laughs> I could do that. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I'll, I'll rein myself in. I apologize. <laughs> I, I, I was just I was just ready to like, all right, I'm just gonna monologue yet again. And then I just heard this like loud noise come through my headphones. And I, I didn't know what was happening at first, and then I looked at Andrew and I was just like, Oh, I I, I see what he's doing here. Pretty good. Pretty good. I liked it. In retrospect, I liked it. it took me a minute, but I liked it. Um all I was gonna say uh is I think for me this just hinges on who they bring back. Uh, you know, if this is a continuing the 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 JJ uh, and uh, Justin Lin trilogy, then then I'm good with that. Uh, if it's something else, then it's kind of just like I don't know why bother you know making this movie. They've got 900 TV shows that they're working on, and people either like them or hate them or they think they're fine. I don't know. It just feels like the Star Trek uh, like film franchise is just kind of a different beast than I just feel like if you're not going to just be keeping in line with kind of how they've done it, um, which I think largely successfully into darkness is like fine, but I liked the other two. Um, I, I just don't, I'm just not sure if it's worth it. So, so hopefully they can get Chris Pine and company back. Obviously we'll be down Anton Yelchin, uh, which is, which is a big bummer because uh, he's a great actor, but um, you know, I think there's enough, enough characters in, in Star Trek that obviously they can they can they can make up for for for, for the absence of a, a core cast uh, member but um yeah that's my take on it that's my take we'll see what happens uh, to quote Andrew um, we shall also see what happens with the next project from director Damien Chazelle that goddamn mm-hmm, wizard mm-hmm. Uh, Damien Chazelle uh, who directed the likes of La La Land, uh, Whiplash, and First Man, I think most recently was his most recent project. Um, he's working on a new project called Babylon. Uh, it's, uh, it's I think, set in Hollywood's uh, Golden Age, from what I understand. Uh, set in the late 1920s during the movie industry transition from silent films to, to talkies. Uh, has been reportedly described as, quote-unquote, the Great Gatsby <laughs> on steroids. <laughs> Uh, take that as you will. Uh, and so we've got some casting news on that front. If I, I think this is the first time we've talked about this on the podcast, so I'm just going to say everyone that's involved in this project in terms of the cast. Um, but uh, Gene Smart was the latest addition. Gene Smart has been crushing it uh, of late. Um, she was... Uh, well, I, I most recently saw her on uh, Mayor of Easttown, which I talked about a few episodes ago. I think it's a, it's a brilliant HBO limited series for anyone that hasn't had a chance to check it out. Uh, she was also on another HBO show, uh, a little HBO show called Watchmen, uh, for anyone oh, that hasn't yeah. had a chance to check that out. They should definitely watch her in that because she's very good in it. Um, and she's playing a certain Watchmen character, which I, you know, I, I think adds, adds a little bit to the, to, to the show. Uh, and apparently, uh, she's gotten, uh, three Emmy award nominations for her role in a little, uh, TV show called hacks, which I don't, I don't know. H- HBO anyway. is just throwing the money at her. Oh yeah. It's an HBO max show. So it's, so, <laughs> yeah, basically HBO is just like, just be in everything. Yeah, Gene sure. Smart. Just, just be in everything for us. And, 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 uh, it's working out pretty well. Um, so she is joining Margot Robbie and, uh, Brad Pitt, uh, in, in this, uh, in this film, in this film called Babylon. So, um, that sounds fucking cool. I'm all yeah. in. Okay. All right. You're all in, uh, January 6th, 2023 release date. Enrique, do you have some thoughts on this? No, I mean, I was all in with Damien Chazelle. So Period. doing a good, that's all I need. Yeah, exactly. Like, you know, Dylan, Man can do whatever he wants. Like pretty much, I'll, I'll, I'll give it a look. I'll give it a look. He's one of those filmmakers that I'll I'll watch literally whatever he makes, whether it's you know turns out to be as good as other stuff. Who knows? But you got an amazing director, you got an amazing cast, so it's set up for success. 
I'd like to see Damien Chazelle and uh, do a fantasy or sci-fi movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like a Knights yeah. of the Round Table kind of situation. You know sure. what I mean? That'd be cool. With, with yeah, Tarantino really cool. co-directed. <laughs> That'd be, sure. That would be a <laughs> maybe would be in phase something space. to watch. Maybe in phase space. <laughs> in phase space. That that's that's the sure. high enough concept that would require the yeah. dual talents <laughs> of uh, Damien Chazelle and Quentin Tarantino. Yeah, I, I'm up down. I, I would watch the hell out of that. I I, I would. I won't lie to you. So, um, I'm an I have a counter proposal. I have a counter proposal. What if Quentin Tarantino worked on? One animated show uh, centered around the Game of Thrones universe, and then uh, and then and then Damien Chazelle did another animated show, uh, also centered around uh, the Game of Thrones universe, because because we definitely want two more Game of Thrones animated shows. If, if they're uh, directed over at HBO by Max. Damien Chazelle and Quentin Tarantino, I'm fucking is that, is, yes, is that what it takes to get you excited for that? Honestly, actually, fair point. Fair point. I'm, not, I'm all in. Yeah, you're, Let's see what you're, you got, you're not, dude. You're not wrong. Um, <laughs> all right. Well, I have good news and bad news. Which were you on first? <laughs> Give us the bad news. I take it back. It's just all bad news. It's just all. I was just full. I was like, I, I did legitimately think, oh, one of these is good news. I was like, actually, no, no, it's just bad news and bad news. The bad news is Quentin Tarantino and Damien Chazelle are off doing their own things. They're definitely not involved in Game of Thrones. The bad news is we are indeed getting two more Game of Thrones animated shows over at HBO Max. Oh, and you know why? Shit. Do you want you want to know why? You want to know why? Lean a little closer. I'll tell you why. Because fuck you. Because fuck you, that's why. <laughs> how many how many uh, how many things are they making for Game of Thrones now? I've lost count. Um probably like a six um, or something. officially only one like the the House of the Dragon prequel yeah. is 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 shooting right now. That one's for sure happening. They they filmed a, a pilot for something which was like supposed to be Oh God, I don't even remember. I don't know. Um, I, I my 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 brain has literally blanked on it. Uh, it is blocking it out of my brain. Uh, I don't know. There was some other like uh, like White Walker esque adjacent like around that time period. I think that was supposed to happen. They filmed a pilot of it, if I recall correctly, and then they did not greenlight the actual series from it. Um, so there's only one actually officially, officially really definitely going to happen in development, but they announced one animated show previously, which I don't think we knew anything about two more animated shows now, allegedly, because again, three animated shows for game of Thrones totally makes lots of sense. Uh, there, they also, there's also talk that they're going to do, uh, other live action, uh, TV spinoffs, um, something about, Something ten thousand ships. I'm looking at this article. Uh, there's a there's another one, uh, uh, nine voyages. It's kind of which would be a spinoff of the spinoff or something <laughs> like that. There's, they they talked about doing a flea bottom show, and this article does say that they are not moving forward with the flea bottom show because <laughs> so they're why? announcing shit. Why? Of an course, of course, shit. announcing an 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 accident. I just it's ridiculous. I will, I will say if. If, if I were to watch another Game of Thrones project, I probably would pick an animated one before a live action one if I were to choose, uh, just because you could make it different enough. But sure. but who who knows? Like it's gonna be one of those things. It's gonna come out. I'm probably gonna watch it, and then if it completely loses me after one or two shows, then I might be done with the whole thing. But in terms of like the universe at least that George R. R. Martin created, it's interesting. So if they lean more on that and less on the ending of the show, then I'd be more interested. But it's one of those things like who knows? It's it, just the way it, the show ended. I just I've lost faith in it. So, it. I don't yeah. want it. You could bring me I back. I don't it. know. You could if you go something, if you make it really different and you focus on what made it great in the earlier seasons and the books then then maybe i'm back on board the universe is rich enough that it could sustain spinoff after spinoff after spinoff the problem is 
does anyone care anymore? You know what I mean? Um, and you know, maybe if, maybe if George like put another book on the shelves, then that would like that too. reinvigorate, yeah. you know, reinvigorate interest in a big way. I just don't know that a show is really gonna, is really gonna do that. You know, I think people are just burned at this point. And, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe I'll be, you know, eating crow, uh, you know, uh, eat, eating crow, crow, you know, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know when House of the Dragon rolls along, but I and maybe I will watch it. You know what I mean? I just I I just not excited for, for for any of this. It's just it's it just feels like desperation. Every time I talk about it, it just feels like desperation. Like they're just clinging onto that success. And you know what? You know what they should do is fucking 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 put Gene Smart in this shit because that would probably help a little bit. Because clearly right. they got a little thing going on. But also, really, they just do need to get Tarantino and or Damien Chazelle to get this shit because, again, that's 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 what's really going to get my interest uh, going in this. <laughs> I will offer uh, some slight details. Uh, apparently, one of the three project, uh, three animated projects we know some information about is going to be set in the Golden Empire of Yeeti, which is maybe pronounced Yaitai, but I'm pretty sure it's Yeti based on that, which is a region in the continent of Essos, uh, which is apparently considered one of the oldest and most advanced societies in, in the, in the realm. Uh, and, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's inspired by Imperial China, uh, much the same way that, that Westeros, uh, was inspired by medieval Europe. So, Okay. Is that, it's, is that from, it's an Asian is that from centric, the books though at all, or is that just... uh, it's probably it's probably been written about on some pages. You know what I mean? I don't think anyone's okay. ever actually uh, you know been there. Yeah, uh, I don't remember. You know, I don't think anything's been set there. I think it's probably just been like this is on a map somewhere, and mm. that's a thing. Um, but you know, so you know th- that probably just gives it f- them free reign to do whatever the hell they want and just slap the Game of Thrones brand on it and call it a day. But does that does that uh does that move the needle for anyone? Mm, I mean, it could be more interesting. Again, I don't want to see the same thing. So if you make it different it's, enough, yeah, it sounds interesting different. enough, yeah. then then yeah. Okay. All right. Who wants to talk some trailers? A couple trailers. Want to sure. talk? Sure. Let's do trailers. All right. Well. We uh, we have a trailer for an upcoming Pixar project. We talked about an upcoming uh, Disney animation project last time. Now we're talking about an upcoming Pixar project. It's called Turning Red, uh, coming out next year, March of next year. Uh, it's directed by uh, Domi Shi, who worked on the short film Bao, uh, which oh. was great. I, f- I forget oh, which, uh, which film it was in front of. But I remember seeing it. Which one is that? Uh, is that the little? Is that the little dumpling yeah. boy? Oh my goodness! Man, like, how did you destroy me in five minutes? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking destroyed. Yes, it, it was just like five minutes. Uh, is in front of Incredibles too. That's oh, okay. right. Which we, which we covered on the Reduced podcast you down uh, to uh, a while ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Brutal that uh, one is. Oh. Yeah. So. Uh, so yeah, she's she's. Uh, uh, I think I think making her her, her feature film debut with this, um, and uh, you know, uh, it it certainly looks unique, uh, and, and and I think a good way. But um, it's turning red. It's the teaser trailer for it. Uh, How would you guys feel about it? it reminded me of uh, that one episode in um, fuck, what's it called? God damn it, I can't remember it. HBO <laughs> horror show, uh, Lovecraft Country. Yeah. Yeah, how th- th- with the with the woman with the tails, how she turned into a fox. Oh, I was like, what? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah, I, I yeah, oh, I, okay. I, <laughs> yeah. So I think yeah. it's based um, off of the uh, Eastern 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 lore where, where people turn into foxes or something. Like there's, there's a, a spirit in them. But yeah, is that a red right. panda? Yeah. Right. Okay, so that is definitely not a fox. Yeah, I guess it definitely is a panda. It's definitely big. Oh, I, I assumed I assumed you but were red talking about. I think, that's, I think that's what the that's yeah, what the Lovecraft one yeah. was, was based on. Was like that 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 uh, that spirit or whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I wonder if this is a similar thing. That's the only thing I really have to offer. Animation looks pretty. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Looks like it might be interesting. Um, yeah, I'm sure it's going to be really really good. I'm excited about it. I, I was sold just on the premise. I think either when you two were talking about it or I heard it released, I think it was during that big Disney D23, whatever expo they had. 
literally just a just a description of the movie. I was like, I'm sold. Like a, a little girl mm-hmm. that turns into mm-hmm. a red panda when she gets like uh, anxious, stress or whatever. I'm like, done. I'll watch it. <laughs> Pixar. Exactly. Question mark. It is I'm Pixar. Uh, yeah. Yep. You know what I'm yep. saying? That's, that's mm-hmm. what Pixar period is what exactly. It's Pixar yeah. Period sold. This 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 looks um, and it, it looks unique even for Pixar. I feel like you know. I feel like Pixar. You can usually kind of identify, um, you know, outwardly, and and this this to me feels uh, unique, even even amongst kind of the the, the, the Pixar um, echelon. So I'm excited about that. I think that's that's very neat. It's very cool. It feels like a very unique vision. I know I think it's written and directed by Domi Shi, so it just feels like a um, I don't know. I, I'm sure I'm sure it's probably going to be very personal, very emotional, uh, and I feel like you know. Just the the pure ridiculousness and joy of of seeing uh, this this poor teenager just uh, uh, you know turn into a red panda and 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 lose her shit. Uh, I think is going to be is going to be very entertaining. Um, so I'm excited to to, to see um, excited to see this. Yeah, it's uh, it's coming out in March. Score is going to be done by Ludwig Göransson, which I'm seeing Ooh. from the Wikipedia page. So that's very very exciting. But yeah, I, I think it's a it's a fun teaser trailer. It you know it gives you enough of the premise. Um, <laughs> without telling you the plot you know it's a, it's a good teaser um but yeah I'm, I'm 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 excited about it so uh turning red from pixar coming out next year but coming out in less than a month uh hell this might start streaming by the time this episode is up <laughs> who's to say um it is the next television series from marvel studios that's right uh we're feeding into the the next television series. It is the first animated series from Marvel Studios, and it asks the question, "What if?" Hmm. Every time I do that, I'm just like, I just I just don't have the gravitas the way that Jeffrey Wright does when he says it. God damn, they knocked it out of the park. Yeah, they did. Jeffrey Wright to 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 do the Watcher uh, in this this. Uh, I cannot. This, uh, this, I this will show not here. interfere. <laughs> oh, holy shit! <laughs> <laughs> what a f- man i hope i well i think the it, it, i hope it's a doctor strange centric show that kind of that kind of because i mean we really don't have a lot of doctor strange exposure in the mcu uh it seems like it's fairly minimal um and i hope that this puts him up on a pedestal to explore these different things that happen in the multiverse that, that'd be really cool uh, almost like if him and the Watcher were like uh, your your guides through the different through the multiverse, that'd be fucking cool. And uh, man, I I think I'm most pumped about this one. The teaser yeah. gave me goosebumps. I watched the trailer again, and it just gets me super, super, super hyped. Um, I think this show is gonna. I think this show is gonna be incredible. Absolutely, blow your socks off. Make you think when you turn it off every every time that every time it airs, you're gonna wonder what's next. I think it's gonna be an excellent show. I I can't be more excited about this one. Nah, looks looks good. Um, I when I saw the trailer, my first thought was, "Shit, this is the last Chadwick Boseman thing we're getting." So like that's that's gonna wreck me. But yeah, it's. It's just such an interesting concept, and I hope they really go balls to the wall like it, it does seem here. Like, there is just, you know, all sorts of weird things, and I hope it's not fully just MCU, you know, just remixing MCU stories. I hope it just gets weird and just goes you out You got there. zombies. You got fucking That's true. They got Marvel zombies, zombies. yeah. So, I think, I think it's going to be very different, which is going to be cool. Yeah. Uh, I mean... It looks incredibly unique, right? You know, um, definitely very different thing than we've ever seen from from Marvel Studios. Obviously, being animated first of all is 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 quite the departure. But that kind of it feels like it opens up a lot of possibilities, uh, you know, in storytelling avenues in a way that trying to make this show in a live action medium would probably be impossible to pull off because they've gotten most of the voices of of the respective characters back. Some exceptions. I assume the not opens RDJ. Up. It's definitely not. Like, that does not Jr. sound like RDJ, but yeah. So you know they didn't get everyone. You know what I mean? They definitely didn't get everyone. But you know, I think a lot of the peripheral characters. I think they they managed to get them back. I, you know, we hear Hemsworth at one point. It's definitely yeah. Hemsworth. So, um, 
you know, I think for for the longest time, I just figured, oh, this is, you know, a little bit of a fun diversion that they're going to throw out. Um, But, you know, between uh, Doctor Strange, you know, literally be calling, you know, being called in the multiverse of madness and just the general direction, I think that that Marvel seems to be sweeping uh, with with their with with their current projects, Um, maybe Spider-Man as well. We still don't have confirmation of that. It really feels like this could be a quote unquote canon show where it's, you know, here are, you know, this isn't the main line, you know, timeline or whatever of, of the Marvel universe as we've seen it to this point. Um, but these could all be just, you know, branches of reality or something like that. And, you know, I just think that's really cool. It makes it feel more interesting to me that it's not just like, eh, let's just do some fun things and silly things. And, you know, well, let's have fun with it. Like, no, no, no. It's like, like these are actual possibilities. Like, I don't know. It's just kind of neat. Um, I think it's just a cool way to do it. And, and to, to, to respond to Andrew, I hope that they do actually try to tie it in that way. You know, Dr. Strange is kind of your point of view character through this as he's going through like a multiverse or something like that. You know, I just think it'd be, it's just be really cool. Um, you know, to, 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 to keep this tied into the greater MCU instead of kind of having it as this weird shuffled off to the side animated thing. And like, ah, eh, who cares? Like, I'm not expecting this going to have any major consequences on movies moving forward or anything like that. But I think for it to kind of have the same place in the canon as, or close to the same place in the canon as what we've seen with the other Disney plus shows, I think would be really neat. Um, so that's kind of what I'm hoping for with it. And I'm hoping they also just, you know, do again, you know, they, I hope they also have fun and do cool and creative things with, with the things, you know, I want it to be more than just what if X character was Y character instead. Yeah. And obviously we get a fair share of that in here. And some of it's cool. Like, you know, Peggy being, uh, you know, Captain Britain is, is very cool. Uh, T'Challa being Star Lord is, is weird and, <laughs> and out there and, and, and creative because it's just so bizarre. Um, but I hope that we get more than that. And yes, we see zombies uh, and other things, but I want to see like stories going in different directions. And yeah, I want to see weird out there shit. Dr. Strange um, at one point's got like fucking bags under his eyes. It looks like he's seen yeah. some shit. Yeah. Like what's going on with that? You know, I, I want to know what that's about. You know, I hope it's not just, he's like in hell shooting like beams out of his hands. It's like, Oh my yeah. God, what in the hell is happening? Oh, I can't wait. Yeah. I, I think know. I read somewhere I, I just, that it is Canon. It's, it's considered Canon now. Damn, okay. Well, I hope that's true. Um, yeah, I, I mean... I could be know, wrong, I, I, but I think I, think, I, I Again, I think I think with the story direction that the MCU is, 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 is going towards, you know, I think it's easy enough to just say, like, you know, just, just, just in the same way that, you know, if, if a Spider-Man movie is going to bring in Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield or whatever, like, well, those movies are, like loosely canon then at the same time like oh, they're they're a different universe but you know the multiverse means they they still exist in this universe of possibilities blah 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 it's like okay well then so does so does so does uh you know t'challa star lord you know so i think if it works by the by the same logic um i think that's cool and you know and if it has repercussions on the mcu as at large that would be really fucking cool but i just i don't really see them doing anything that changes a status quo or anything like that in an animated show because i do think it's going to have probably more limited viewership unfortunately than than something like a Loki, where obviously the Tom Hiddleston fans are uh, are definitely in attendance. <laughs> so, so yeah, that's what if it is uh, streaming on August 11th, uh, aka maybe now. Who's to say? Um, so maybe check out new episodes every Wednesday on Disney Plus once it starts on August 11th. Uh, I don't know if we have an episode count on this, but I expect uh, I expect these are probably shorter episodes. So I wouldn't I would be surprised so, if it's yeah. you know eight, ten, something like that. Um, that would be great. Um, but yeah, looking forward to it. 10 episodes confirmed. And apparently they're working on a second season already too. So uh, there you have it. You heard it here first. August 11th is Marvel Studios. What if, but we're assembled here to talk about the latest Disney plus original series. And that is Loki. Um, we're here to talk about Loki and, um, uh, Man, lots to, <laughs> lots to get <laughs> there's, into. There's a lot to talk about. Uh, it is a loaded show, uh, loaded with with many, many, many revelations. Many, many, many. Just, just a fucking fascinating show, I must say. A very fascinating show. Um, it was created by Michael Waldron, directed by Kate Heron, stars uh, Tom Hiddleston, Sophia Di Martino, Gugu Mbatha-Ra, Wanmi Musaku, Eugene Cordero, Sasha Lane, Tara Strong, and our boy. 
Owen Wilson. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> I, I was really trying to make sure someone got it for me. So I appreciate that. Uh, um, so Loki, after stealing the Tesseract during the events of, Ind- uh, of, of Avengers Endgame, uh, Loki is apprehended by the Time Variance Authority, the TVA, to answer for his crime of uh, disrupting the flow of time. And boy, uh, that doesn't even scratch the surface no. of what this fucking show is about uh, and, 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 and what it covers. Because I think, I mean, look, I'll open up the floor to you guys in a second. Yeah. I thought I thought One Division was a very ambitious show. I think you know it went weird places and weird out there places, and I think Falcon and the Winter Soldier was a little bit more traditional, right? You know, it kind of felt like an MCU film. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe you know over the course of six episodes, Loki is just Bonkers. fully batshit. Uh, and in, in, in a good way, in a good way, I think. Um, but it really just it really just goes for it. Um, and so I don't think you can dispute that it goes for it. I think what you could maybe debate, maybe debate. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe we'll have a consensus. Is whether it works and and what it's going for. So so now I turn to you guys. Uh, you know what did you think? Uh, in the non spoilers, what did you think about uh, the six episodes of Loki? All right, I can go first. I'll. Keep it brief, because really, I want to get into the spoilers, because that's where the meat of this show is. But to answer your question, this show really worked for me. It's kind of the show that I was most looking forward to. And in the end of the MCU shows that have come out so far, this is my favorite one. Um, I came in liking loki already but the new characters they brought in all are just so interesting and played so well like owen wilson is great in this in in such a different way that i i haven't seen him in other roles like he's comedic but he he's just so different and he he's just i didn't i wouldn't never have guessed that he would be the perfect person to play mobius the tva agent in this show and then everyone else is just fantastic in this and each episode is different enough where it's kind of distinct. Like I, I picture each episode in my mind differently. And this was a show that I, again, I enjoy in these kinds of shows when they come out week by week only because it leaves me like a whole week to think about it and to you know, listen to people, to discussions, read things online and just like speculate about what's going to happen next. So I really enjoyed my six weeks with Loki, and at the end, I was left pretty floored. It just, it's the first MCU show for me that really stuck the landing. And if anything, it just like perfected the, the landing. I thought the, the ending was fantastic. So, uh, pretty much just praises right now for Loki. I thought they were great. I, when you said TVA, Time Barons Authority, I just started picturing or like listening, hearing the music in my head. Because the soundtrack like mm, really yeah, sticks with you. Yeah, it's just yeah, everything was. I really enjoyed this. This was just. This was like what I was really yearning for in New Marvel Phase Four, and it just scratched all those itches and and even more. So that's that's what I have to say for now. I think that, um, I think it melds what Wandavision had and what it was lacking and what what Falcon and the Winter Soldier had and it, it what it had and what its strengths were and what its weaknesses were and it, it's like it was the perfect blend of of big MCU lofty ideas and execution with weird out there and forward moving things for the for the for the IP um I think it I think it moved forward in a huge way I think it was totally awesome as a show um because it did leave you with those cliffhangers every single every single episode left you wondering what was happening next like what 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 direction are they going to go in like there was always that that yearning to return to the show um that i thought was lacking in the falcon and the winter soldier series um it did not have the slow it, it did not struggle with pacing in the way that wandavision did i think um i think you know from episode one i felt like i was 110 percent in 
and I was 110% in on every episode. Um, I think that the concepts were intriguing and cool, and uh, the the season finale was absolutely fucking ridiculous. Um, I think it did a really effective job of introducing new characters and new concepts, and um, the 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 score was incredible. The uh, the big MCU style execution was totally awesome. The effects were cool. Um, the characters were fleshed out and and real and uh, well realized and um, ah man. <laughs> and just when you think like oh we re- like it, th- there comes a point in the show where you're like okay well like what the fuck's gonna happen now like what you know yeah and then boom. It keeps going in such a big way. Like, it, it moves forward. Like, it just fucking leapfrogs itself. Like, you thought, oh, I thought that would have been the end of the show. No. It's not the fucking end, man. It keeps going. Um, And to be completely honest, I was... I mean, I always enjoyed Loki and Tom Hiddleston and stuff. Like, I, he was never, you know... I, I, he was totally cool. He's fine. Um, But I never found him super super like i was never like he was never like one of my favorite characters in Mm -hmm. the mcu you know what i mean um and i feel like the show did such an effective job of exploring his character and and just exploring him as as a as a as a person um and it made him so much more compelling as a character um and kind of makes me want to revisit like the past Marvel movies and stuff and like pick up on those, those subtle like character flaws. If you're going to call them character flaws and stuff and, and who he is and everything else and see if that depth is there in the previous movies and whatnot. Um, because Tom Hiddleston is displaying all sorts of depth for the character in the, in the series. Um, and, uh, so are the new characters, the new, the new people that are, that are there. Um, and I, I I think one of my favorite things, and I don't know if it's, um, I'm not quite sure if this belongs in spoilers. It probably belongs in spoilers, I guess. Um, the way that characters are explored in the show, that's what I'll say. The, the, the way that characters are explored in the show is totally unique and very, very intriguing and interesting, especially Tom Hiddleston's character, the, the character of Loki, yeah, um, and what it is to be Loki. I think, um, I think that the way that they explored that um, is really fucking creative and cool. Um, and I don't think I've honestly, I don't think I've ever seen anything remotely close to it mm-hmm. before. Um, and uh, it's totally unique. It's totally well executed. Um, and definitely by far the best MCU show I think that that we uh, that I've seen to date. Um, and just in general, I think it's a very compelling show. Just period. I think it's a really cool fucking show. Um, departed from MCU stuff. Um, don't get me wrong. If you're invested in the MCU, you get a lot more from it. But I think you could watch it independently on, on its own right, and and still have a really good time with it. Um. I'm excited to dive into spoilers, um, but it does, yeah. it does, yeah. it does, it does put Phase Four in the future of the MCU in a very unique position, um, and I think we have a lot of <laughs> very exciting things to look forward to, um, depending on how they, how they. I, it's one of those things that moving forward, um, the MCU could very easily deteriorate and fall apart and then and then <laughs> have a serious problem um but it, depending on how they rein everything in and and like the rules they set up for themselves and um you know depending on the boundaries that they set you could have something very compelling and very awesome uh and something that once again MCU setting um you know just new grounds for 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 film and television and that medium in itself something that has never been done before on on with the medium um and it could be it's it's very exciting times to be a fan 
And it's very exciting times to be a film and television person and, and, and into that stuff because moving forward, I think we're going to see things that haven't been done before in film and television. And I think it's really fucking cool. Um, so that, that's what I got on that. Very nice. I, uh, yeah, uh, uh, don't have a lot uh, more to add um, other than just, just echoing a lot of what has already been said. Before I forget, Natalie Holt uh, did the score for the show Fantastic. and her work was brilliant. Uh, I think definitely the, 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 the most impactful MCU score period, uh, in a long time. Um, really, really great, uh, memorable stuff, you know, noticed it throughout the episodes, just really, really good. Uh, uh this, I mean, yeah, this show is just bad shit, like I said, and, and I loved it. I, I, you know, I loved every second of, of it fully embracing and leaning into the bat shit in a way that we really haven't seen in, in a while. I mean, WandaVision was, was weird and out there, but it was almost like weird and out there with the touch of just kind of traditional MCU type, uh, type stuff. Um, and whereas it wasn't Loki, too I think out, is really it wasn't too far out there to where you couldn't follow it. Right. right. And I mean, more, weird. I think more in terms of the sitcom thing was new and different for the yeah. MCU you know, and so they're really trying something new that we hadn't seen before, really in terms of format. I mean, this is a pretty traditional 45-ish, roughly, av- you know, on average minute thing. Six episodes is on the shorter side of things, so it, you know, feels more like a miniseries. But I, I think I think really in terms of the the concepts, the ideas that this, this thing explores, I think it's on another level, I think, compared to even WandaVision. You know, WandaVision is sitcom, genre, exploration, but ultimately the plot is grief, tragedy and witches and you know synthesoids and stuff like that you know what i mean like you know it's it's still pretty pretty baseline mcu stuff not too too crazy whereas this is you know leaning obviously very heavily on avengers endgame as it's you know pivot point with with uh with this loki being a variant that escapes as a result of the avengers actions and and their time heist and so it's exploring you know repercussions on the timeline in a way that we've only really seen hinted at you, know, you got this whole time variance authority which is this whole bureaucratic organization that's brand new to the mcu obviously adapted from from the comics um but it's just totally it's just such a weird different vibe you know they've got this throwback aesthetic uh for this 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 whole organization which i loved i thought i loved the production design of all of this the set design was 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 really really brilliant but i think you know even even beyond just the setting i think it was just a very highbrow concept throughout of you know what is it to to mess with time what is it to to be able to travel through time and drop into anywhere in a timeline what does it mean to have alternate versions of (laughs) Of people you know of yourself of 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 loki you know you know you know and and how how do you make that inform your characterization i think is kind of what andrew was getting at you know uh and it's all done really creatively, really interestingly, uh, really effectively. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I was excited for this. I think when we saw the trailer with with uh, Tom Hiddleston playing uh, D.B. Cooper, you know, like Loki <laughs> as D.B. Cooper, I knew then and there I was just like, oh, this is going to be weird yeah. and different and out there and it's going to be fun. I didn't expect it would go as far as it did. Uh, and that was cool. I liked that it got, it was not afraid to get super weird and super out there. And maybe that loses some people. I don't know, but I kind of gobbled it up. I really did. Uh, overall, I just, I just, just, I thought it was very thrilling throughout. And Tom Hiddleston was great. Um, you know, I think he's been great throughout the MCU. He, he, you know, um, he was per- he's been, he's, he was perfectly cast as Loki. You know, there's so a reason good. he's played him so as many good. times as there's a bit. You know, there's a reason that in the 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 main timeline they effectively redeemed Loki to be a heroic character. Is because I mean, honestly, partially is just because Tom Hiddleston was so good that they just wanted to keep him around. And like, fair, fair. You know what I mean? And there's a reason that even after they killed off Loki in in Infinity War, they they brought him <laughs> back for his own show. You know what I mean? Like. Let's have some fun with it. Let's concoct a reason to to bring Loki back, and then for them to kind of turn it into this show and 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 turn this show into something that I think is ultimately uh, a, a very. It's a show that has, I think, definitely some impact moving forward. You know, I think it sets the stage for a lot of really exciting things for the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and in a way that I think the previous two shows did not. I think ultimately. WandaVision and Falcon and the Winter Soldier were character studies 
at their core, and that's kind of really what they were setting out to do was tell a story of particular characters. Loki is that as well, but then I think it's then some. I think there's a little extra on top of that in terms of really trying to pave a path forward. Um, uh, it, it, there's That's spiced throughout the other ones. That, maybe that's an unfair statement, but I think this one does it in a bigger way, a more obvious way, perhaps. Um, so, so, yes, so Tom Hiddleston's great. Uh, Owen Wilson, man. God damn it, I loved Owen this Wilson. This is so good. This. Uh, you know, Owen Wilson is, is a perennial source of wow jokes, you know, wow. Um, but you know, uh, I've never really liked Owen Wilson particularly. I found him to be fine and like, you know, mostly tolerable when he's not with Vince Vaughn or whatever. Uh, but I think he's legitimately fantastic. Actually really good. Show. Yeah. He's really good. He's really, really good. Cause he's not really, he, he's like sort of playing himself, but like a different version of himself, mm-hmm. you know? In a good way, you know, it's still very much an Owen Wilson performance, but like, it's like Owen Wilson, if he gives a shit, it's like when Bruce Willis shows up and he's like, oh yeah, yeah, Bruce Willis can act, can't he? You know, it, it almost feels like that in a, in, in a way. Uh, and I loved it. I think he was just he was so perfect for this. And and yeah, touch such a, you know, it definitely feels like a left field kind of choice where like, you wouldn't expect it. You wouldn't expect it on paper, but man, he just jumps off uh, and, and, and nails it. Um I think I think the rest of the cast, um, Sophia Di Martino, uh, who who plays a character that we'll talk more about in spoilers. Uh, I think she's great. You know, a, a nice um, uh, character that, that to, to 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 bounce off of Loki, Tom Hiddleston's Loki. I think their interactions kind of drive the show in a big way, and I think that the, I think she was she was just really well cast as well. Just you know. Not anyone I have any familiarity with what before watching this show, and I think she's just really great. And of course, there's 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 a few other um, uh, actors that put in some work that we'll also talk about in spoilers. Um, I don't want to give the game away too 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 soon. So yeah, um, loved loved what they did with this. Um, was excited for it. It lived up to my expectations. Uh, the six episodes were a joy to watch uh, week to week. It, 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 I, I, I agree with, I think, Andrew, I think every episode, you know, especially from episode one hooked you and, you know, it ended in a way that, that wanted you to come back the following week and, and uh, see, see what's going on. Uh, and, uh, you know, it didn't really miss a beat. And, and that's kind of the nice thing of a, of a six episode show is, um, you know, you don't have to spend too much time with filler. Obviously, you know, if something falls flat, then, you know, <laughs> Flag Smashers types falls falls flat. And it's like, well, in six episodes, like, oh, it's kind of, you know, it's not, it's not much to go off of here. So, um, I was, I was happy with it. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. Big, big fan of Loki. Uh, props to, uh, Michael Waldron, uh, who, who was the, the, the head writer on it. And, uh, big props to Kate Heron, who directed all six episodes. Um, so, Yeah. Really, really liked it. So, um, recommendation? I recommend this show to everybody. It's a very yes show. I think uh, even with limited exposure to the MCU, which I don't know, I mean, what that, that I mean, Endgame was like the most watched movie like in all of existence, so <laughs> evidently everybody's got exposure <laughs> to it. Um, but even with limited exposure to the MCU, I think uh, I think you can still enjoy this, this show. Yeah, no, I think for me, being a fan, this is without a doubt a very yes show. Like it just, it just hooked me the whole time, and then at the end, it just left me wanting even more in a good way. So, I I think if you're not familiar with the character as much, you haven't watched all the movies, you may not get everything. But I think you could still. After the beginning, you just kind of understand, like, oh, he's Loki, and this is what's going on. Like, it's not so dependent on you. You have to tr- make that transition from Endgame to this show, but then after that, you can kind of just focus on on this show. And then, obviously, there's going to be some repercussions for it. But I think, especially as an MCU fan, if especially if you like things from the comics, like this is this is exactly what I wanted. Yeah, I, I've. Uh... It's a show that does really feel authentically comic booky and unabashedly comic booky and not afraid to embrace those elements, you know, and and just get weird with it. And it's 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 fun for it. Uh it's I, I 
I appreciate that, you know, and I think Marvel's overall didn't been very good about that, about not being afraid to, to just let superheroes be superheroes and have costumes that maybe on page seem kind of silly or whatever. But this, this does it in, in kind of a, a, a next level way uh, at times. Um, so for me, it's a very yes show. Yeah. I, on the whole, I was just very pleased, very satisfied with it. Um, really from start to finish. Uh, I, I don't know if this totally works, you know, as something, if you're not already predisposed to the MCU in some way, I mean, I think if you're a Hiddleston stan, you know, you're already in and I think you'll enjoy it because I think he's great in it. Um, and I do think it's, I mean, I think it's one of those things. It starts, I think with the literal scene from (laughs) Avengers that, that sets up the, you know, where, where the show goes. Uh, there are plot devices, definitely within the first episode that can get you up to speed. Mostly it doesn't mean you're going to appreciate every little thing that, that comes along, but I think the show does enough to be self-contained in a way that if you were kind of watching it in a vacuum, that it would still work. Um, um, you know, I'm not sure that it ends in the same way. Uh, I think that it goes places that, that may lose people. Uh, I think it is unexpected with some of the directions that it takes for me. I think personally a good thing. I think it's a good thing. Um, I liked where it went, but I, you know, maybe it'll lose people that way. Um, but overall it's a very yes show. I think it's just really well put together, uh, very smartly put together. You know, the TVA is just again, very fun setting, very cool, but also just makes for fun, unique set pieces, unique interactions and, and just the the pure sort of zany things that I don't know, man. Comics are just all about, uh, and mm-hmm. I think that's just really, really fun. I love that about it. So uh, it's a very yes show. I think it's a consensus very yes show. Uh, so uh, <laughs> consensus uh, <laughs> recommendation here, uh, as opposed to to our last episode. But uh, hey, you know that just means you need to watch Loki so that you can enjoy uh, our spoiler coverage of it. Uh, and we're going to do that now. Full spoilers for Loki. All right. Full spoilers for Loki. Full spoilers. What do you guys want to do? Episode by episode? How do you want to do it? Andrew, Andrew's bursting. He's bursting at the <laughs> seams. I think he wants to talk about <sighs> something. <laughs> 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 I I think my... The really cool thing that they did is they explored Loki, but then mm-hmm. they explored Loki's growth as a character and Loki like as a whole through other Lokis. Yeah, right. that was very right. neat. And I think the most impactful one was the 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 old man with glorious purpose. <laughs> glorious purpose. Yes. Yeah, we should we should we should also say uh Loki also starring Richard yeah. e. Grant as classic <laughs> Loki. Fantastic. Um, awesome. But think about this for a minute. Uh-huh. That Loki survived the. He survived everything. Right, Thanos. Yeah, went to live by himself for a long fucking time by himself. His uh, Ragnarok happened. He has no home world. He's got no people. And he went to Lee, and then he left his solitude to go find his brother because he got lonely. And then he got captured, and then sent to a fucking hellhole or whatever it is. Yeah. Um. He then, because he was jaded, thinks all I can do is cause destruction and and death and everything else. You know what I mean? He's a jaded individual. He sees the growth that the the Tom Hiddleston Loki had. He comes back, and then he resurrects Asgard from memory. That's pretty badass. Some badass (laughs) shit. It's some badass shit. You can't deny it. Resurrects it. it. He hasn't seen it. And however, because he's old as shit, and Mm -hmm. we know that they don't age, right? So how long did he spend on that fucking place? You you don't know. Right. But he hasn't seen his... Hundreds, thousands of years. Thousands of years. He hasn't seen Asgard in thousands of years and reconstructs the kingdom of Asgard to save Tom Hiddleston Loki and and, 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 uh, Sylvie. Mm -hmm. It's fucking spectacular. And then he finally found his glorious purpose. And it was fucking beautiful. Like, it, it brought a single, <laughs> a fucking single tear to my eye. Like, it was a beautiful fucking thing. It was fucking, it was glorious. It was so cool. Yeah. Um, one of, easily one of my favorite moments in the show. Uh, second to the, uh, to the fucking finale, which was just, we can get to the finale yeah. at the last part of the spoilers, but 
Um, that episode, which I thought was just going to be a funky, like, hey, we're on Loki planet or whatever. You know <laughs> what I mean? Um, I thought it was just going to be like a one-off thing or just a, 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 bonk, oh, a fucking weird episode. And it turned out to have a lot of emotional resonance for the character. And I thought it was fucking cool. Um, but yeah, exploring and then him finding uh, it, it's... Uh, it, him finding the love for himself and Sylvie, which it's like it's it's obviously like a romance thing, right? They pitch it like a romance thing, but it's mm-hmm. kind of not a romance thing because it's 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 a version of himself, and that's also kind of a it's romance. kind of a romance yeah. thing, but at it's the not, same it's time, not incest, though. it's not incest. No, it's himself. No, I, I, exactly, self love. Yeah, self exactly, and that's what it <laughs> is, and that's fucking cool. <laughs> It's fucking cool. You gotta you gotta learn to love yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Scott earned the power of self love. <laughs> exactly. There you go. Yeah. But it's definitely a romance thing. Uh, you know, yeah. and that's cool too. Um, but I think uh like I said, the the, the concept of uh him f- him finding romance with uh and in, in, in the both of them. You know, the way they come together and they're different versions mm-hmm. of Loki. You know, or they're different. They're, they're, I don't know. It's just the whole fucking thing's cool. Um, no doubt. Yeah. I mean, it's all very cool. It's, it's cool. And it's very well done. You know, that the, it's, it, it sells it all. Uh, you know, I think there's a way that this show could have been a disaster. You know, on, on, on paper, a lot of this stuff is like, oh God, there's 900 Lokis running around and Loki falls in love with himself and it's, <laughs> it's a woman. It's like, oh, all right. Okay, we lay off uh, the uh, the the LSD for a little <laughs> while. You know what I mean? Like, you know, I think I think there's a way that this could have really fallen flat, but it doesn't. It's the fact that it all works and it brings that single tear to Andrew's eye when uh, Richard E. Grant in the most ridiculous ass looking costume uh, just, uh, just finds his glorious purpose. <laughs> yeah, just ridiculous, ridiculous it's just so looking. Ridiculous. But it's so fucking Play good, totally right? Straight. It's good. Play yeah, totally it's so, straight. No great. reference like, to the fact that this man looks ridiculous. Yeah, so Just, good. You got a gator it's Loki good. running it's around. Good. Chopped the yeah, eight. I got an alligator Loki. <laughs> got a little oh, kid man. Loki who's just an asshole. <laughs> you got Frog <laughs> Thor hopping around in like a jar or yeah. some shit. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Frog. Yep. Yeah, it's nutty. Oh, it's so good. It's nutty, dude. Yeah. It's a it's a it's a nutty uh, wild ride of a show, yeah. uh, and. Uh, why don't, why don't we traverse through all six sure. episodes of it? Does that sound like a plan? Yeah. Why don't we start with episode one? Start at the bottom. Uh, and then we'll work ourselves up to some of the absolute the uh, insanity that, that, we, that we see. The finale particularly yeah. uh, obviously warrants a uh, considerable amount of discussion. Yeah, episode one, glorious purpose. We've already said it a few times on, mm-hmm. the, on the show. So uh, um, yeah. this, is, this, is, this is to get everyone up to speed episode, right? right? Like recap, this is this is almost. This is Loki is like, well, it, and I think it's clever. I think it's I think clever. they did. I think they did a good job with it. I think this is like such a great way to do like the clunky exposition. Yeah, yeah. It just it just worked within the setting, and it's only one episode. I think if you expand it any longer, it's just it's just too much. Mm-hmm. And it's yeah. and it's maybe the weakest episode of six strong episodes for me. Like. We uh, by week I just mean like less strong if anything than the other ones mm-hmm. because of the okay. nature it's adding less things to it. But I, I thought that they still did it well, just like getting this Loki through a journey that the other Loki went through, like essentially seeing your life play out. And you know, people have said, "Would you change that much? Like, would you go from being a person who's trying to conquer Earth?" To having like regret and all those deep emotions, but I think Loki's always had that as a thing, and we've just seen him develop it through, uh, through the Dark World, Ragnarok, and Infinity War. But I think if you, I, I think it makes sense. Like I think if you watched all that and you see the error in your ways, essentially, it makes you question everything you've done. So I think it makes sense. I think, I think it's. I think it's yeah I, I I agree with everything you said and and I think why it's clever is it works in story and it works for audiences that mm-hmm. are watching it that that need the recap you know what I mean it's it's this is this is 
all right, we get it. Avengers Loki, you know, or you know, 2012 Loki gets gets kicked out of the timeline because he takes 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 the test rack when he's not supposed to. Blah blah blah. You know, this gives you the setup of the TVA. It gives you kind of the rundown mm-hmm. of what's going on. It gets taken before the judge. He's got the guy that has every line of dialogue he's <laughs> ever said in his life, which is funny. Um, and you know, just the kind of like, what the hell is going on? This is so weird, you know, type thing. But I think that the emotional moments that that Loki sees, you know, him and in, inadvertently basically causing the death of his own mother, I guess adoptive mother, whatever. Uh, you know, that's a that's a that's that's like the best one of the best things in the Dark World which is not overall a great film. And I say that despite having a literal 27 by 40 poster of it up over my shoulder <laughs> that, that Andrew and Enrique can see uh, in plain view. Uh, you know, Frigga's death is a big, big moment. Her funeral is like probably the, like the real emotional core of that film. Uh, but, you know, we really only see it as it's explored in terms of how it affects Thor moving forward. And, and for Loki, it's kind of a footnote in, in some ways. Um, where here it's not, you know, this is, this is a Loki who sees, wow, I was, I was, I was a real asshole, you know, like obviously this is a Loki fresh off of trying to, to take over the world with the Chitauri or at least, at least start with New York city. You know what I mean? Um, wants to be the ruler of, of Midgard, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, this is, this is, this is a real asshole, evil, uh, you know, in a, in a, in a, in a bad mental place, Loki, and seeing everything that happens with him, you know, it does it does make sense that it affects him in this very dramatic way. But it's also good because it means that he gets some character development that he already had. That we, you know, because because right. we really learned yeah. to love Loki, I think even more so because of uh, his interactions with Thor and Ragnarok, and I think because of you know his, uh, uh, you know sacrifice in infinity war you know uh his his uh perhaps um ill-advised uh attempt to 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 double cross thanos and such but yeah i think it, i think it really works you know setting the stage for the whole show setting the stage for where loki is as a character and 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 you know setting this i guess at this point setting this idea up of of who sylvie you know who we eventually learn as sylvie is you know there's this loki variant that's out there uh who who is who is wreaking some havoc and what and what does that mean and, and and you know come back next week and we'll find out type thing so yeah i think it's a, i think it's a good start i don't think it's i actually don't think it's the weakest episode of of, of the of the series for me personally i think that's and that's one of the subsequent five episodes i guess <laughs> but um i think it's a great setup you know and I, and I think even though it is very exposition heavy and very much just doing a heavy lift of here's where is here's here's where we're at here's where maybe we're gonna go in the future i think it's really really good so i i i loved episode one i think it i think it's really really effective at, at what it sets out to do hit the ground running um, i was 100 percent in yeah, when i saw uh, the first episode um i think i'm with you i don't think it's the weakest episode uh, i think it did a like you said i think it did an effective job of of what it set out to do um and uh yeah it set the pace in a big way and, and and I will say, I love that. I'm pretty sure it's the first episode. The whole DB Cooper thing is just like a throwaway thing. It's like, oh yeah. shit, I lost a bet to Thor or whatever. <laughs> it's just very <laughs> funny. No plot consequence. Just like let's just have this fun little set piece as he's like looking through his little time theater of his life. Yeah, so that was pretty fun. Know. Cool. It was just funny. Pretty cool. Yeah. It was just funny. I just, just funny, I just yeah. love how Mobius like dissects him. Right. Mm-hmm. Like he just mm-hmm. has some clever mm-hmm. lines that like really pick at who Loki is, and he even makes Loki reflect on himself and he's like mm-hmm. do you like do you enjoy hurting people and like he just keeps asking him that and like it, it's just like such a good way to do like a, a character study and like a reflection like have these two characters just talk it out in a room reflect on what you would have done in the future not even what you've had done it's just like what your, your natural course would be so i thought that was great and i enjoyed uh landing in the desert him telling those people that he was like the god of you know he's <laughs> just just immediately just going for like i rule everything and i rule everyone so so kneel <laughs> there's like six people in the fucking um, desert like whatever man <laughs> yeah I, I i to enrique's point i i think that broadly speaking for the show it's a show that is extremely exposition heavy but i do think that not in a bad way you know and yeah. i think that a lot of the inter- you know it, it relies on dialogue in a huge huge way to drive its characterization and i think it does it you know effectively like, like we talked about 
Tarantino on this episode, obviously. Tarantino is a director that's a very talky kind of guy. He loves his characters to talk, 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 you know, talky, 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 talky you know, talky. you know, that sort of thing. Uh, but, uh, and I, I think, I think you have to establish the kind of the right balance for that to work. And I think that the show does that. I think it does establish the right balance. Um, you know, sometimes you know, I, I think the dialogue needs to feel natural. It needs to, you know, it needs to, to, to feel real. And I think that Owen Wilson and Tom Hiddleston really definitely, I mean, I, I don't know if, I think they've been, I think they were in Midnight in Paris together, but like, I don't know how much interaction they actually had in that movie, but um, they, they, they feel genuine together. Like they just bounce each off other, yeah. uh, bounce off each other so, so well. That feels natural. It just, you know, there's just a real good chemistry between the two of them that makes every interaction, even though it's just dialogue heavy or exposition heavy, not feel like they're just, oh, fuck, I got to read this line off the script or you know what I mean? Like it just, it, it feels, feels, feels good. I think it much of the real. credit Tom just, Hiddleston It just comes too. off the page. Tom Hiddleston bounces yeah. off every character in this show so Basically, well. yeah. So well. Um, mm-hmm. But kudos that, to uh, Owen Wilson. Shakespearean mm-hmm. training. Uh, because o- right. Owen Wilson, Owen Wilson, lifted some weight in this show and i'm very disappointed <laughs> yeah. highly disappointed my biggest critique of this show is we never see owen wilson on his goddamn jet ski i wanted to see that man on, get his, on jet his goddamn ski. jet ski well uh, we're in we're in spoilers in few, yeah so, so hopefully so, season two because so season two yeah i mean so he, they, you know. it has to be like his ending arc right like he clearly was a man goddamn. with a dream it's, it's the most telegraphed yeah. thing, and if they don't pay it off, I will never I will forgive Kevin rage. Feige. Yeah. I will take that hat off that man's head, and I will <laughs> expose his semi-bald head for the masses to see, and it will be... I'm sorry. He needs I'm sorry, Kevin. Glorious purpose. I'm sorry, Kev. I didn't mean, I didn't mean it, Kev. <laughs> right. <sighs> that was disappointing. That was disappointing, but we'll get there. Uh, all right, episode two, The Variant. Um Starts off with I think was it the Renaissance Fair yeah. and the, they, they <laughs> capture the the TVA agent and Pompeii. Uh, <laughs> this is oh this is the this is the hurricane one yeah they go to, uh, uh, where you know Rock yeah. Smart or whatever it's called right 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 yeah Roxon just yeah. taking over the world basically yeah yeah that was that was a, this is this is a cool episode I mean I I like especially the the later the latter part like leading up to meeting this variant it's all about like this loki variant and 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 they're so clever and they're they've been tricking us the whole time and everything it's like it's kind of like builds up suspense of like who who's behind this and like who who is it and then you get that reveal in the end and it's just like um i don't know if they fully they fully show her in this episode or is it just kind of like the tease no, I think she fully think she gets pulls revealed. the hood back. I think she pulls the hood at the end. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah you know, okay. it's 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 not about right. you or something like that, and yeah. then teleports. Yeah, off. and then holy fucking shit, who is that? Uh huh. Right? right, like when that happened, right. who is that? And like, and there were so many things like, and she's manipulating all me, the minds of all the people. Right. I just cut everybody off. I don't. I'm sorry. I don't uh, no, I'm right, excited. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, like if you would have asked me in the beginning of this show, like. What do you think are some of the things that happened in the show? I would have said Lady Loki appears. But mm-hmm. I couldn't tell you in what extent. And clearly this is different than that. So, but it's just, I just love the the way they, like, the things you that you would have predicted still happened, but they did it in an exciting and surprising way that just, just made the show really exciting. So, I thought, like, this episode just went to new places. And this was, I'm like, yeah, that's like, this is where we're going. And I like it. Yeah, I, I I agree with you, with with your point because you know there are things I knew about the show walking in the door. I did know you know that they had cast someone who basically everyone assumed would would be playing Lady Loki. There's the one shot in like the trailer that almost looked like Black Widow from behind, and it's just a shot from a future episode of Lady Loki. And I knew that Richard E. Grant had been cast to some you know in some capacity and so i figured you know this whole thing about oh this badass loki variant you know i just figured it was like an older version of loki or something like that you know i just figured Mm -hmm. it's all loki loki versus loki blah 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 and like that's not inaccurate obviously if you if you if you dissect it you know in a general manner but uh yeah i think i think the 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 unhooding uh uh being sylvie uh i guess as we later learn her name i guess 
I guess next episode probably. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, that, that was a good reveal. It was, it was a good, holy shit thing. And it's just like, okay, all right, who's this? I'm intrigued. I want to know more. And okay. All right. I'm ready to come back next week and find out who, who, who this woman exactly. is. Um, another good, another good cliffhanger. Definitely good, definitely good ending. But I think it was also just a, you know, good episode leading up to it. it you know, I, this is, you know, a time hopping one, which was fun. You know, you go from, the past to the way past in Pompeii, which was very fun, uh, to, to the, the, you know, the hurricane setting and, and the future, which, you know, was just a little, little bit futuristic, not too crazy or anything like that. Remind me not to go to Alabama in the year 20, (laughs) don't do that. But also, uh, what I like too is, you know, Loki obviously is a, is, 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 he's, he's magic, you know, he's got magic and he, you know, he, he always kind of projects himself and does shit like that. But you had this kind of mind control thing and at this point you know since we didn't really know who sylvie was at that point i was like oh is this show fucking doing enchantress you know i like i thought you know yeah, for, for a minute true. you know i was yeah, like I, 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 thought about that. I think ultimately the character is probably somewhat of an amalgamation of lady loki and the enchantress or at least a version of the enchantress um but given that we already I mean, she, yeah she literally enchants right people right enchants them and you know and and possesses them and they fight loki at the end and you know and whatnot so i was just like okay like i did not expect the enchantress to be in this this show and right so you know it wasn't exactly amora or anything like that is you know i'd expect from the comics and maybe they do that in some future you know movie blah 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 who, you know but they've already kind of they've they've done scourge they had carl urban come in as the executioner <laughs> yeah They've now kind of done this. I'm like, I think they've kind of covered the bases, you know, you know, they can go back yeah. to the if they need to, but, um, you know, it, it was fun. It was cool. You know, I liked the intrigue and, you know, this is another thing and we didn't really talk about it this, you know, this way. And I know we at least talked about it with, with WandaVision, probably less so with Falcon because I feel like Falcon wasn't like a huge mystery building week to week or anything like that. The week to week stuff really just did work with this, I think overall. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and staying in, you know, engaged in the conversation, the discussion, like what the hell is going on here? Who's this? Who's that? What's going on here? Um, I think it was just really effective. And, and, and obviously that ties into the, the idea that, you know, it ends on a cliffhanger that's effective and keeps you, you know, wanting to know what's happening next and, and, and whatnot. But, but yeah, um, it's a good episode. This is a good episode here. Um, another good episode, I say so. That was a good one. Um, are we ready to move on to episode three? Uh, yeah, totally ready. Episode three. Oh, Holy town. shit! So Sylvie's three. in the fold. Yeah, Sylvie's in the fold. Lamentous. I I feel like at least in the things that I was reading and like keeping up with, like people didn't like this episode as much. But I I quite liked it just because we finally got somewhere different, and you could make an argument at the end of the episode that like things didn't work out. So like, what did it accomplish? But one of my, like, minor complaints for the earlier episodes is that we just kept going to different places on Earth. And I'm mm. like, there are an infinite number of planets to go to, so we don't need to keep going back to Earth. So, I, I like that we went to this this different moon, Lamentus. Uh, it's just somewhere else different. So, I enjoyed that aspect of it. And it was just very, from an episode of, like, having sylvie in the background just putting her in the front and center with um with our loki was great and they just had amazing chemistry so i i i really like this episode so so i think that this this episode um pacing wise for the series i would say that this is for me was the weakest episode but it offered a whole lot so i feel like uh, as a whole it's a very yes show and i think it's mostly very consistent I think there's a lull in in the pacing of this episode, but I think it's almost th- for character development. So I find I, I don't I don't I have a hard time critiquing it because of that. Um, the the part of running through the street and stuff it it kind of seemed I, I don't know some of, I wasn't into all of it, but um, this is the episode where uh, he breaks the 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 thing on the on the train or is that le- is that that's this one. That's this, yeah, one. Yeah. That's this one. Okay. <clears throat> so I think this is interesting because you can see how she acts in, in the face of like, like frustrations and stuff, things not going her way. And she mm-hmm. gets real pissed mm-hmm. about it because she's been operating like a, on as a lone wolf for however. 
and and you can see how when something doesn't go according to plan uh, the way she reacts to that and it's it's very juvenile um whereas the way tom hiddleston loki reacts to it he's just like hey it, it, i've been dealing with this shit forever would would you fucking find a way to figure it out you know and um and i feel like the two bounce off of each other in a way to to grow um and then you can kind of see that romance that romance element at the end of the episode um and uh you can kind of you can kind of you can you can watch both characters grow within one episode and 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 leaps and bounds and i think that was really cool um the first half of the episode is I just didn't like the city running part. I didn't like that part. Um, yeah. But aside from that, I think the I think the episode as a whole, I enjoyed it. Um, so that's what I got on episode three. So I think what I'll say is I'll co-sign with Andrew. I think that this to me was the weakest of the show, the weakest episode. It was my least favorite episode. Obviously, is this the episode I, I where, they, where he sings on the train? Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah he gets I very much enjoy train. that's that's when when they got on the train. I, I don't mean to cut you off again. I did it again. God damn it! I'm a rude <laughs> motherfucker. Keep 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 going. Um, You're good. When when they get on the train is when I feel the episode starts to climb back up. You get the whole bit there where they're talking about things. This is when you find out Loki's you know potentially bi or I guess bisexual or whatever. Um and and you can get a glimpse of his romance and her romance and and the and the things that they've had to endure as as Loki's or whatever and then he starts singing um Nordic songs with the people on the train and everything else <laughs> yeah. and yeah. That I thought great. that was super cool though because he was singing songs that resonated with her that were sang to her in her timeline and then they kind of they that's when they kind of identified with each other I feel like in a, in a big way um before you know somebody noticed him on the train or whatever but i thought once they got on the train the episode started to climb up out of its lull and that's when it got interesting so i guess that's the latter portion of the episode but um i think it i think it ended on a crescendo i think it ended very well yeah Yeah. now i'm done (laughs) (laughs) no I, i i also agree with that i think that although i think overall it was my least favorite it's not to say that it was without merit i think there's a lot going for this episode i think that this for me is probably the episode where the execution didn't stick the landing in a way that i think that it wanted to at least um i don't know i mean i don't mean this necessarily as an insult but a lot of the episode felt to me like agents of shield and i just think that the the production values and stuff like that of agents of shield are lesser than what we've seen in the disney plus show so far where they really do feel like mcu uh, you know, Marvel Studios film type shit. And we see that throughout most of this show. This to me just felt like kind of like, I don't know, the the color grading was Vormir light, you know, in terms of what it, what it was doing, um, the, the guards, costumes and stuff. I don't know, in, the, in like the pedestrians on this planet just all felt to me a little hokey and not in, a, not in like a super bad way, but it just didn't feel super authentic. It didn't feel like it was a lived in environment. It felt like a we have to make a TV show and we're doing an episode on a weird out there thing. And it almost makes sense in retrospect why there's so much on earth because it's a lot easier to do that. Um, But I think that where this episode thrives is not so much in its production quality, but in the, 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 uh, the work that it does for, for building Sylvie as a character in terms of obviously we see their interactions where she's very short fused. And I think that that is fun when he gets drunk and, you know, <laughs> is get, you know, being ridiculous. It's, <laughs> it's very entertaining. Um, but I think getting, you know, getting that, that, you know, getting the answer to the question that you had last week, who's this woman, you get the answer and you get a lot, you know, of information about her. Um, and, you know, uh, it's good. I think ultimately it's good. The, the, the episode ends on this nice moment where that's just like, oh, we're fucked. You know, another good cliffhanger of like, well, how are they going to get out of this one? I guess tune in next week. You know, that, like it, it does, it does a really good job with that. But I think 
I think, you know, for me, this comes, this goes away from the TVA, which I, I loved all the TVA stuff throughout. Yeah. And this, this is a very big departure from that. And I was just like, oh, I was really digging that. And the first two episodes, is, there's like no Owen Wilson in this episode, which I'm like weirdly disappointed by. <laughs> um, and, you know, I don't think I had enough. I, I'd be curious. I wonder if I revisited it. I wonder if I watched it with the added context of knowing more about Sylvie, if I'd enjoy it more and, and enjoying kind of like knowing where it's going, I, I could see this working better. Um, but, on, it, but on a is first this the one that opened up with young Sylvie. Uh, I think that's next episode. Uh, I think that's the next, next episode. Okay. Yeah. I think this is one we don't really, we don't really get her background so much as just what she's conversing yeah. with, you know, Loki about and, you know, through dialogue. So, um, I say it's my least favorite. I think it's good. I think it adds a lot of value, and it does add the 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 the, the bombshell, which was probably fairly predictable that all the TVA workers are uh, are variants as themselves. They're people from Earth, you know that that have that have variants. Yeah. So TVA is not what it's big, cracked up to be. Yeah. You know, there's some funky shit. We already knew that the mm-hmm. timekeepers are some bunch of fuckheads, reptilian shitheads <laughs> keeping the tabs on everyone's shit like <laughs> nah, i don't know about that and so you know this is the first really kind of uh hint at what's to come i think in in a, in a big way so so that's what i got on episode three yeah. who's ready to talk about episode four let's do it All right, quick 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 question oh. yeah yeah do do you think you could pick up another version of yourself by pick up do you mean in a romantic <laughs> way yes a like female in, version like of Colton if, Brown. If there was exactly like, because I'm thinking like, is it is it partly that like Loki knows what he likes, and he's like, this is what I would want someone to say to me. Like, is that subconsciously going on too? Like, or do you think hmm. you would just be like, no, this is too similar. Like, get the fuck, get out. <laughs> um, I I could probably be down with it. Not gonna lie, I mean, I could make it work. <laughs> I honestly, I mean, to be fair, you know, this is this is a classic, probably nature versus nurture uh, <laughs> argument that, that that we're heading into right here. And I think if they're a carbon copy of me, if they're identical to me, then no, probably not. You know what I mean? Like, like, yeah. you know, you got to have a little dynamic, right? Uh, I think Loki and Sylvie work because, yes, obviously, at their core, they're, uh, I guess. F- I was going to say fundamentally the same people. I guess you could argue that they are in fact the same people. Although I guess well, some, genetically they're some fundamentals are not, different. But, yeah. Um, but she didn't but even I, grow up as a, as an Asgardian. I mean, correct. She was only an Asgardian I, she had, for exactly. correct. Her, yeah. her, 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 uh, her, I guess, nurture, uh, is, 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 mm-hmm. is very different than, than, than the Tom Hiddleston Loki that we know, even, even, whether you're talking about variant Loki as we see him here or even main timeline, you know, or sacred timeline Loki, I guess is what, what he would be. Um, so, you know, I think, yeah. I think if, I think if there was a, a Sylvieized version of mm-hmm. myself, yeah, fuck right. it, man. Is it, yeah. Cause it, is it really just like someone's like, Oh yeah, we have like these things in common and like, we actually have the same background, but then we grew up in different ways. So mm. maybe, I don't know. You know, Maybe that's what it is. But see, that's the cool thing about do, do, Loki. Do you, do you think, yeah. And but Andrew, answer the question. Huh? Answer the question. <laughs> oh, do I think I could pick up a version of myself? Yeah. It wouldn't be good. Or or, or do you think you'd be attracted to a, a variant version of yourself? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It'd be. It wouldn't. It would not be. It, it would have to be a ra- almost like the same thing as Loki. Mm-hmm. It would have to be a radically they, they different like, version of myself. They just like grew up in a completely different way. Yeah, it had to be a radically okay. different version of myself because it would yeah. not be good to have two no, of that's me. That's fair. <laughs> here, right? Like exact. No, I, I feel the same way. It can't be the same exact. I need. I need. I need. Person. I need to be pushed and to 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 do things. Yeah. Otherwise, I would just fucking lay around and not do anything it would not be good <laughs> so i surround Fair myself enough. with motivated Fair people sure. that do things and it and it eggs me to do things as well so that's uh i know my shortcomings as a person so i just yeah, i yeah. fucking make the best of it <laughs> uh but i think see the cool thing about that you know and talking about you know sylvie and loki and stuff you you kind of you kind of realize a little bit more, you know, and talking about it 
you have Loki who grew up in the kingdom of Asgard, right? And he's got these, he's, he's always been in the shadow, right? Mm -hmm. And then you've had Sylvie who's grown up with nothing, always on the run. And he feels like he can't do, he, he, um, he he wants to stand out and he feels like he has to do all these things to stand out to try to do something or blah 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 and sylvie though sylvie's sylvie's found her glorious purpose she wants to give people back their free will because the tva is taking it all back mm-hmm. and and i think loki sees a part of himself that's missing the the part that causes him to lash out is is what sylvie has cuz he's missing that he doesn't have the positive, glorious purpose. You know what I mean? And it and and with Sylvie, he becomes whole. And I think it's I think it's super cool. I think it's so fucking cool. Like you have a con- you have a complete person when when you put the two together, and it's ah, just so fucking ah man, it's just so cool <laughs> thinking about it. Anyways, no, I don't think I could pick myself up. I think I could pick myself up, but it would be detrimental to my you growth as a person. En- you wouldn't enjoy it. It would It would not be good. <laughs> it might be a lot of fun, but it would not be good. <laughs> fair enough. Well, you know, it, it, to be fair, you probably have to have a certain level of narcissism to to, to really make it work, and I think that's why, that's why it's, it's a perfect storyline for Loki, story <laughs> for Loki <laughs> is because that's him. And, and of all the characters, show, so. he, he'd be the one to fall in love with himself. He's, he's, he's absolutely the one to fall in love with himself. Although, hey man, Thor Love and Thunder, what happens when uh, when, when Jane Foster uh, starts starts uh, starts swinging around Mjolnir? Is, is, is Thor going to be like, is Thor going to be more turned on or less turned on? We'll have to find it depends. out. Uh, I feel like it depends on how... I think the, because of the journey he's gone through, he's going to be more turned on because he's now comfortable with himself. Whereas mm-hmm, if he true. was insecure... He'd be like, how else dare someone else yeah, hold like, oh, Mjolnir? Oh, someone else hold me. I, I think he's gotten to the point now where he's just going to be like, oh, you can do this too? Oh, okay. All well, right. you saw his face when Captain America got that fucking yeah, exactly. hammer, right? Like, he, got, yeah. he, got, <laughs> he was like... Fuck yeah, he got, man! He's like, oh yeah, he like he got excited in a in just a pure excitement way. It seems like, <laughs> man, All that right. that 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 <laughs> in game Thor was just so fucking cool <laughs> with this beard and everything else. Oh man, I need to rewatch that shit. That yeah, was that's a good one. Stuff. That's just that's just one of the hypest movies of all time. Oh yeah, just, just <laughs> it just is. It just is, man. Shit. So good. Right. Episode four, the yeah. Nexus event. Uh, we learn a little bit more about Sylvie, her her backstory. Uh, Loki gets stuck in a time loop with a certain someone that we haven't seen in quite some time. That's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Not uh, for Loki. I'm always a fan of Lady Sif. Yeah, not for Loki. Yeah, yeah. Lady Sif back. It's fun. You know, yeah. she's she still exists. It's good to know. And and, and as far so as we know, she's still alive. As Hell far as we know, Hell, as far as we know, kill her off. So bring her back and Thor: Love and Thunder, please. Yeah, I think I think she might be back. I don't know. Oh, I feel okay. like I heard something about that. But hopefully. yeah, I'm done. Hopefully, yeah, hopefully, that would be good. Uh, what else happened in the in the Nexus event? Oh yeah, Owen this Wilson was the got old killed. Shit. Yeah, this was the oh shit episode. This was the oh shit episode yeah. in a huge oh, way. Oh, with the TVA, they yeah, get the heads cut off. Yeah, they, so we just fucking. There's like there's there's the three. Off. The, yeah, four. I, I I I submit four separate. Oh my god, what the fuck just happened? Moments in this. Number one, Owen Wilson getting pruned yeah they're not that, they're not was, that was a big huge old shit yeah number two number two uh loki getting pruned. <laughs> yeah. that was a huge <laughs> one that was fucking huge yeah number three sylvie the time killing keepers. the timekeepers <laughs> and they're robots which is good because it looked janky as shit yeah, and they, i loved it like, oh. i was like oh it's by design that's why they look so awful right uh number four uh, three new Lokis in the yeah. post credit scene. So this was a uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what? Do kind of yeah, episode. You could say four with alligator Loki. Include yeah, allig- alligator Loki don't specifically. D- don't discount alligator what, Loki. What sets it over the edge of just being like, yeah. oh, okay, <laughs> like, all right, you know, classic at? Loki, uh, boastful Loki, yeah. kid Loki, but alligator Loki. That is a bridge too far, <laughs> my good sir. This is ridiculous, and I love it. Um, Man. Yeah, this is this is a this is, this is a big episode. I was look looking at the plot synopsis and I'm like, yeah, like, nothing really much happened. No, so I'm like, oh my god, look at how much happened in this. Yeah, yeah, bonkers. 
Uh, <laughs> yeah, and I, and I'm glad of how things turn out because I, as as I don't like consequences, so I do like me some like killing off main characters. But I think if you had killed off completely uh, uh, Morius and Loki, then you're like the show. The show would have to go to so many different places to to really oh, man. get back. And like yeah, I think that, you could uh, do it, but it would have been such a tall task. So yeah. I'm I'm completely okay with what they did. It's just, pruning is not killing. You. No, no one's ever said if you're pruned, you're dead. So we're not changing up the rules. But it, it's still in the moment. That's a big oh shit! Like what's going well, on? Because you don't know exactly. And like and for the, especially and nobody knows. Especially because yeah. Owen Wilson is the first one to be killed off. Right. Like, so I'm like, oh, he's dead. He's gone. You're like, he's like oh, you're oh like, no. Like oh, so that's why he signed on is because he only had to do three right, exactly. episodes. Right. Exactly. And I was like, oh shit. <laughs> And I was, I was, I was bummed, man. I yeah. was really sad. Me too. I love Mobius, man. Like he's, he's, uh, he's I mean, honestly, I, I, I actually, I, I love Loki and, and I, I love Sylvie, but like pretty much from minute one, I'm like, ah, oh, Mobius is my dude. You know, like, he, like, <laughs> uh, he I, just wants I, jet I, ski, I'm a big fan man. of this guy. Get this man his jet ski. Get yeah. this man his jet ski. You know, uh, is, is, is really how I felt about Mobius. So like. Like I was, I was like it. It hurt my heart. It hurt my yeah. heart when when they pruned him. I'm like, it's oh, great Mobius. And I was, I was legitimately disappointed. And I was like, if I don't see Owen Wilson in the rest of this show, I'm gonna be pretty upset. I'm not gonna lie. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And I didn't think I would imagine myself saying that at any point in 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 my, <laughs> in my life. But but here we are. And and God damn it, Loki did it. Um, yeah. That did was you, good. Did you did you think the timekeepers were the baddies. I thought I, w- that, I was like, uh, I wasn't sure. I thought, I mean, prior to them being obvious puppets and looking all fucky, yeah. I did think that there was something more going on. Uh, you know, and here's the thing too, though, you know, I thought that there might be more something going on, but I do, you know, I did wonder is, is there a limitation to what the MCU shows can do in terms of yeah, where they a, go? Because mm-hmm. because for the longest time, everyone and their mother thought Mephisto was the big bad in WandaVision. And it turns out the big bad in WandaVision was the character was there all along, right? Yeah. Um, and so I kind of just thought, okay, well, you know, if there's going to be some sort of big reveal on this, I just figured this is a show about nothing but Loki variants. The big bad is Loki. Loki is the big bad. You know what I mean? Yeah. I just figured that's the obvious reveal. And so I figured even if the timekeepers themselves are just a front for something else, I figure they're a front for another Loki who's got his own reasons for doing what he's doing. And, you know, we'll get some weird, crazy timeline shit and we'll figure it out and maybe subsequent seasons or some, some, some nonsense like that. So I didn't think the timekeepers were kind of it. And I also, you know, I felt like the, the middle timekeeper did somewhat resemble Kang the Conqueror and I was just thinking like okay there's some other Kang references like Renslayer is a character traditionally associated with Kang and like maybe maybe this is something that we do moving forward but again I was just like I don't think they're going to do Kang the Conqueror we'll talk about that in you know, mm-hmm. a couple episodes but um, I did think there was something more than just the timekeepers it felt too simple too clean you know something something else had to be going on yeah it was always kind of fishy but I was like I, I, I didn't think they were going to be, like, pop... I don't know. Yeah, just but, straight up Wizard of Oz. Right, exactly. Basically what it was. Um, side note, and maybe this is... It's not a spoiler because we're in spoilers. Uh, they revealed who voiced the timekeepers, and which I will say, mm. I couldn't understand a goddamn thing that they were saying when I listened <laughs> to them in the episode. But Yeah, I'm the same boat. It was, diff- it was difficult. There were, there were, like, nine different voice lines, like... Like they had the voice of like four people. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think they had to very heavily modify it so that people couldn't identify, and it kind of made them basically indecipherable without subtitles. Mm-hmm. They were voiced by Jonathan Majors, apparently. So, so. Oh, really? Sure. Little fun fact, uh, and mm. a spoiler fun fact. One I it couldn't only tell makes, at the beginning of the episode. Mm. It only makes sense. Only makes sense. Only makes sense as we'll talk about when we come to episode six. But yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I just just final thoughts on this, and I'll turn it over to you guys if you have some more in episode four. I actually did for you know an, another moment. You know, I was sad about Owen Wilson dying, obviously, but then they kill Loki off, and I'm like, oh fuck, they can't kill they can't kill Tom Hiddleston off <laughs> two thirds of the way through the show. Like that's that's bold storytelling, 
but it's too it's, bold it's, storytelling. It's, it's, and that's it's gonna not piss smart, off so many people that I think that that is a move that Marvel would have trouble recovering from, and you know, in a big way. And so, I I did think that there was going to be some sort of twist. And and what I you know I felt like this episode did a good job of, or I mean, this series, I guess I should say more accurately, did a good job, again, week to week, thinking like, oh God, what's going to happen? All right, I got to find out next week. I was a little disappointed that they kind of resolved that mer- that mystery within this episode. Like, it was cool. They set up the holy shit moment of the, the, the variant Lokis that we see, but it also immediately resolved the fact that like, oh yeah, Loki's not dead. Okay, and so if Loki's not dead, then also Owen Wilson is not dead. And I was just like, I could have, I would have been okay living with the suspense for a week if the payoff was that they're still alive. Sure. Um, but at the same time, I guess it was comforting to know, like, oh, okay, everything's going to work out just fine, probably. You know, so um, I get it both ways. But anyway, yeah. other thoughts on episode and, and you four? Weren't, and you weren't even sure where he was. It's just like, true. I guess you don't he's know alive, what's but going like, what on. the hell's going on? Right. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Any other thoughts? I was just absolutely blown away by blown episode. Away. I was just away, man. fucking slack jawed. They killed wow. Owen Wilson. Wow. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> like, talk about- unce- unceremoniously, too. Just <laughs> yeah, fucking just, got. Just right there. Boom. Yeah. yeah. Like, what, what the fuck, Brutal. man? Brutal. Like, we talk about. That's- uh- that Ravona, who's like supposed to be his like, <laughs> friend for friend. eons. We've got these, you know, artifacts, forever. these keepsakes and stuff, man. It's just yeah. the betrayal. Ugh, yeah, my heart. Yeah. Owen Wilson does not utter the word wow at any point in this uh, in this series. And that's pretty disappointing. Um, but he does at one point say, how? Uh, <laughs> and that was close <laughs> enough to satisfy it for me. So uh, uh, the show is not a total failure. Uh, total failure. Um, episode five, we talked about it already in, in yeah. some mm-hmm. uh, discussion, but obviously we can flesh out any further thoughts that we have. Journey into Mystery, great title. Uh, cool, great, great you know. callback to the origins of Thor and Loki in the comics. Yeah, I mean, this is the big one in the void uh, where everything gets right. pruned to um, the Thanos copter makes an appearance. Yeah. Oh, this is this Dude, is like I, this is the fucking Easter that. egg episode. Yeah, this I is didn't the catch Easter it the first episode. time, but then I saw it the second time. And I was like, holy shit. Like, it's just right there. It's, it's just a, straight up the amazing. Thanos copter. It literally oh is a helicopter God. that has it's, the little, the, the, the uh, word Thanos just on the tail. Amazing. Wow. Incredible. Uh, uh, there yeah, was the, also the fucking, <laughs> the tribunal's heads in there. Did you see the, that? The, the head yeah, of the, the living tribunal. Uh, yeah. There's a bunch, there's a bunch in Your this. Frog, like, fr- Frog Thor. Yeah, Throg. Wait, Throg I, was just, I, was just, I was just reading, uh, I was um, reading a... Uh, like a comp- compilation, just a random like um, list of all of the shit there, in the episode. No, a bunch of a bunch of different comic issues, and like one of was mm. about Bug, who doesn't oh, right, make right, an right. MCU appearance, but is in the Marvel like Guardians of the Galaxy and stuff. Mm-hmm. And he he's like jumping through timelines and stuff, and he runs into Frog Thor, and Frog Thor tries to eat him, and it was just like, ah, oh, it's, it's good. And then there's <laughs> uh. There's all the there's the fucking uh, the alien ships from the, yeah. the Avengers uh-huh. and look and I think Ronan's ship yeah the Dark Aster the, the is there Aster. that's Ronan's yeah. ship there's a yep. Hell Carrier that's crashed mm-hmm. um I I think I missed it when I when I watched it the first time but I saw a screenshot uh there's uh shit uh was it there's a there's a giant version of Yellow Jacket's helmet from Ant Man yeah oh, I I missed that too. Which I'm like, okay, weird, but cool, man. Uh, yeah. And then uh, there's, I think it's the Avengers Tower, but it says, I think, Kang Tower, uh, which is like a Kang the Conqueror reference. You know, there's just a lot of little little seeds planted throughout this show that point you in a very specific direction. And, you know, um, I don't know. Well, yeah. But we've been teased before, too, you know, so it's like. Right, <sighs> right. I didn't. I didn't want to like fully, fully buy it. I, I, yeah. I, I didn't want myself to believe until I had concrete proof. Because just because I think, I think that I was not someone that bought into Mephisto and One Vision. I was just like, I wouldn't be surprised if if Marvel went there. And then when they didn't, I was just like, all right, you know. Like I said, I think there's probably maybe inherent limitations to how these shows have to operate because you know they don't want to 
you know, exclude the, you know, certain things that they may want to do in films. And obviously they still probably view films as a priority. Well, I don't know. This show might dispel a few, you know, notions to that effect. So, um, anyway, yeah, lots of Easter eggs in this particular episode. Yeah. Great. This obviously is the episode with Richard E. Grant finding his, uh, glorious purpose in oh, his role man. of classic Loki <laughs> as Andrew discussed. Um, but he did stop. leave kid Loki behind. Fuck did leave kid Loki behind. Yes. Uh, and, and, uh, and, just yeah. to form the, just to form the young Avengers. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's still <laughs> yeah. around. Maybe he'll, maybe he'll come back. Uh, you know what's cool is the fucking cloud monster thing in this shit, Eliath, um, which is apparently another Kang the Conqueror reference that I was was admittedly not anything that I knew until I read about it on the internet. But uh, also very cool, just just the whole thing and the you know enchanting it and seeing this like castle or whatever it is. Oh, the fucking you know, castle at the end. Holy thing. shit! Like, I'm like, yeah. like what? It, this is just, what is going on? <laughs> it's just, just too much. Really, really fucking cool. So. Yeah. Um, I mean, I I loved all the different Lokis in this. Like you mm-hmm. bring in uh, mm-hmm. President Loki, President which I Loki thought, was, was which very I thought fun. was our Loki in the trailers. The way they, I I did they think so it. too. I figured that what yeah, I was surprised that it was a variant Loki and just right. kind of a yeah, and and yeah, yeah. I guess because it was Tom Hiddleston Loki, they didn't right. feel too bad about like showing it off in the trailer because people would just be uh-huh. like, oh, that's just a storyline. You know, that's that's an episode plot point. That was that was yeah. a good misleading thing in the trailer. Right, I will no, say. No, no, that was done really well, and and just the scene of them like the the writing of it's just so good in the show because anytime they were talking, are are like some of my favorite parts were were um, classic Loki's telling his story and boastful Loki's talking about how he. He got the Infinity Gauntlet and got all the six Infinity Stones and stuff, and just like maybe telling the truth, maybe making it up. But mm-hmm. then they're, they're all just like drinking wine, and then Alligator Loki is just like in a pool of wine. I'm like, this this is great. It's fantastic. <laughs> perfect. It's yeah. so fucking perfect. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, you you can see the interest in in our Loki the entire time all these other Lokis are telling their life experience. You know what I mean? He just like looks around and wonder about like, Hey, like I'm listening to your story, you know, like if once you fin- you know, finish telling me about it, yeah. he's like, ah, he's lying. Don't listen to him. You know? Um, God, I, I just the different, the different aspects and the different personalities and the, di- I mean, all of it was so good. Yeah. Arguably, this, though, the only one I really cared about was old Loki. Uh, that th- th- that was the yeah. that's the fucking yeah. best. The yeah. um, this episode reminded me in a way of In the Heights, only because <laughs> you saw Loki have absolutely <laughs> no game with Sylvie. It was just like it was just like embarrassing. It was like seeing it was Navi trying to talk to Vanessa, and it just it was just hurt. Yeah. It was just like, oh my god, what are you doing? Like, it, like it was just, it was just a little bit painful in a good way. Um, but like when he gives the blanket, he, yeah, he's just like trying. He, he does the whole like the the little arm trick almost. It's like, oh, let me just like uh over here. Yeah, uh, yeah. it was it was it was great because I love the chemistry that the two have. But it's just like, man, Loki is like thousands of years old, <laughs> and he, this this is this is the best he can do. How about Owen Wilson showing up in that little fucking car? <laughs> the pizza car. I thought for sure he sh- he should have shown up in a fucking jet ski. He should have picked. You know what? That's got to be the final payoff. They, that's they that's what it is. He's 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 got to go back to Earth and be on the jet ski and yeah. just just ride off into the I distance. Hope they're saving that's it for a reason. that's how you know. However many seasons they want to do, two, yeah, three, just, four, whatever, man. That's how it has to finish, or at least that's how Owen Wilson exits the show is just jet yeah. skiing into the sunset. But yeah, he shows up in a fucking yeah. pizza car. That was pretty great. <laughs> it was so pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was pretty good. Uh, uh, good stuff, man. Um, yeah, I think we kind of covered season or er, um, good lord, season five. Oh my goodness, are we doing time travel <laughs> on this podcast? Uh, I think we've covered episode five. I think fairly adequately. You know, a little bit out of order, but you know, that's 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 also appropriate. I, I would I would offer. Um, does anyone else have any uh, other thoughts on episode five, or is it time to move? to what we've been avoiding talking about for the entire episode. Let's do it. Let's just do it. Uh, the season finale for all time. Always. Uh, 
this is a big deal. Oh, this is a big deal episode, man. you might say. So, um, you know, I, just go for it. Just, just start us say, off. I, I was going to say, us I, don't, I don't want to step on anyone's toes. No, just start but, us off. Let's but, go. But no one gets, no one gets me hyped, and I hope the listeners hyped as much as Andrew, just rattling off and 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 getting hyped about shit. I know that this episode got you hyped, Andrew. Don't lie to me. This episode <laughs> got me so fucking hyped. I've been thinking about it since Wednesday. Yeah. We recorded a podcast earlier today. You uh, just wanted we, you just wanted <laughs> to talk about it, didn't you? We took a fucking break. And while you guys made supper and this and that, I fucking air fried four Tostitos, popped open a beer, got some nicotine, and rewatched the goddamn episode again. Well, then give it to us in preparation for the fucking episode. Talk about it. Let it all Um, out. Admittedly, I only rewatched the portions of the episode that took place beyond time with King the Conqueror. Or not King the Conqueror. He maybe Immortus, remains. maybe basic, basically Immortus, but yeah. technically basically, he but maybe a little bit different. Uh, and maybe I did catch up some fucking subtle things. I'm going to start by saying the yeah. intro of this fucking episode with with oh. like traveling through the depths of space and time. That was cool through and, the, and fucking the fucking wormholes the and the voices clips and the voices they had. That yeah. was oh sick. my that god, was really fucking cool. cool. Oh man, it was, it was so really cool. Yeah, that's how you, that's how you know you're like you're hooked. You're like, oh, okay, I'm in for I'm in for a ride. Right mm-hmm. off the bat, I'm just like, oh, this is different. You know, like usually you expect the fanfare, and I'm like, oh, I love the fanfare, Ooh. but like this is different. This is cool. They're doing something special here, and I forgot whose voices you could hear. Everybody, it's a lot. I mean, it starts a lot. with a song. Then you, you oh, do... also the the title credits. I don't know if you noticed that or not. Um, in the in the Marvel the Marvel thing where like it shows the shield and all the stuff, there you can hear the words that they say in the clips that they that that they show in the fucking text box in mm. in like the little sequences on the Marvel logo, okay. um, which is pretty cool. It's like things are beginning to you're you're starting to crack a shell. Things are coming out, and it was fucking cool. Right. Anyways, so fucking episode starts with you traveling through a wormhole or whatever the fuck's going on and then boom you pop up at the fucking castle the end of time beyond space and time like i mean it's space, there's space or whatever yeah. the equivalent is in the mcu i suppose <laughs> yes i mean um maybe if it's immortus it might be limbo um i've been done i i have i have partaken in um substantial mm. amount of some reading <laughs> been reading um, some research internet, yeah you? it blew my mind <laughs> the episode blew my mind too hard so anyways um but yeah he he this castle is built in a in a in an area where it he can monitor all of space and time or or, or at least within this the 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 area that he's contained which mm-hmm. is just like the implications of that are fucking nutty but anyways, they they knock on the door and they go in and that fucking little that Miss Miss Minutes, Miss minutes is boom. Yeah, yeah, we haven't really <laughs> talked about it all. Miss She's Minutes great. is a menacing fucking little she hologram, creepy, creepy little fucker. <laughs> yes, you know, and she poses the deal or you know, and and anyways, so boom, the elevator opens and it's it's fucking Kang. So and like, eat, oh, eating his apple. Yeah. But you just know him as he who remains. Right. So, um, full but disclosure. Clearly, but if you know who's been cast as Kang, then it's just like, boom. Yeah, you know that, right? right. It's but a, It's just an immediate, like, you just know. Before we get the reveal, okay, and, and the title is He Who Remains, I was fully expecting... Like an old man with like a deep voice and just like fucking, I am he who remains. You know what I mean? Like some fucking like Gandalf looking motherfucker sitting up there in the, you know, mm-hmm. in, the, in the throne of time. That's what I was expecting. But no, we get a charismatic fucking <laughs> Kang. Uh, what, what's his name? Uh, I can't think of his name. Jonathan Majors. Jonathan Majors. We get a charismatic Jonathan Majors who's sitting there twisting the top off of his apple. <laughs> Which I think, like, right? How many twists do you get off before the thing pops off? It's a way of measuring how old the ta- the apple is. Isn't that what they say? And the, the thing with the apple, the apple stems? 
which anyways, uh, the, sure. the, the, neither here nor there. <laughs> but I think it was like a little like tossed yeah. time. Anyways. Oh, fuck, man. They get in the elevator. He's like, hey, let's go to my office. Some <laughs> stuff's going on with with uh, with with um, Owen Wilson and 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 uh, the, the, the lady. Yeah, you know, but to be completely honest with you, I'm so fixated on the fucking beyond time with Jonathan Majors. I, I can really care less about Owen Wilson and what they've got going on and, you know, all that stuff. I just got fixated hard on what's going on in that castle. Um, and then you get the explanation or with his, like, like he doesn't need the, the tablet. I don't know if you notice that or not. His technology mm-hmm. is like straight up, just like a fucking on rock wrist. Yeah. on his wrist. Yeah. 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 It, it, it looks like more primordial or some shit than, than, than what the yeah. TVA rocks. And, and then you get the explanation on the TVA and all of it. And it's just, uh, it's just so fucking mind blowing. Right. Like. You know, the, you didn't break. You didn't. You didn't bust out of my time loop. I, I, I led you here. He, Obviously, he led, I knew yeah, you were going to be coming here. I led you here, and this is, and this is, this is what it is. Um, and and they fight, and then she kisses him, and she kicks Loki through the time portal, and we'll talk about where he ends up because holy shit, does he end up somewhere different? Yeah. Um, yeah. which is like the most goosebump riddling thing that I ever that I, that I think I've. I've Anyway, it blew my mind. I was super pumped about the way that ended. But um, the interesting thing here is when she stabs him, when she stabs the uh, Jonathan Majors, yeah, he says, I'll see you again, and he winks. And it makes me wonder. Here's the question, right? So he... The implications of what happens in this episode are huge, like moving forward, oh, right? Yeah. But... Um, yeah, massive, yeah. massive, massive implications, right? The entire MCU's like on its head right now because game changing. It, it is game changing. Um, the thing that I'm curious about is if they'll try to centralize it by making making he who remains kind of like a planted person, like if it was part of King's game plan to 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 plant. To, to break out of the time loop, essentially, is what it is. Maybe the time loop was set up, and maybe um, it was all part of a deeper scheme to have the God of, Mischief come in, God of Mischief come in and break the time loop free into Chaos and mm-hmm. Mischief. Like right? another variant Kang wanted Loki and them to come. Wanted to bust out of the time loop. And then that's the that's the that's the king that instantly slips in and starts the transition to conquering, right? So now 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 we don't have the TVA. Now we have Kang in char- in charge of the TVA. Right? Maybe it was all part of like a deeper scheme. Um and that's and what that would do, I think, is that would make it to where our the MCU is more uh, it you still have a tangible like line of events versus going you know, all over the place and crazy. Um, it would it would make it to where um, you have identif- identifiable characters with identifiable arcs and with, with trajectories and this and that, and it keeps it somewhat contained by making it part of a deeper scheme. Um, and I was thinking about that when I watched it the second time because he's talking about how, um, you know, listen, I, I went out because I'm, I'm just tired you know, but then he's kind of egging on the conversation. He's kind of egging her on to fucking to murder him. You know what I mean? Um, so I don't know. Just a uh, just a thought. But um, yeah, man, what a what a fucking episode. I've I've hogged up a lot of mic time. I apologize. Um, I encouraged it, and I appreciated all of it. So yeah, I mean, Enrique, a lot. What, do you, what, do you, what do you have on this finale? I think I think I think you posted a tweet uh, after watching it that 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 expressed your uh, shock and awe and all. Oh yeah, I mean I was completely floored by this episode. They they pretty much had me at the edge of my seat for really the last two episodes, just knowing that there was a possibility that Ken could be included in the show. Although I never I I think just with the 
the ending that we saw in The Falcon and The Winter Soldier and WandaVision, I was hopeful for Kang, but I'm like, it's totally going to be a Loki variant, possibly King Loki. And then, but I'm still kind of hoping. So then the whole last episode where the sequence, they're, they're going in the, the castle and the elevator opens up and you just see Jonathan Majors sitting there. I'm like, oh, they did it. Those sons of bitches did it. And it was such a joy to be surprised like that. I feel like there's very few instances where you, you're legitimately surprised. Yeah. You know, but it's It's like, it makes so much sense, but it's like, can they, can they do that in a TV show? Like, are they going to do that? It's just amazing to, to see that and witness in in a TV show. It kind of felt a little bit like the ending of the Mandalorian season two. So uh, spoilers, I guess if you haven't seen that, but to suspect the whole time you're like uh is it gonna be luke like no they can't do that in a tv show and then it turns out to be luke's like man props to to both disney and marvel for for whipping out big guns like that that's just amazing to see i'm so excited for for the future now of the mcu like this is it just reinvigorated everything that i wanted from the from this storytelling after Endgame and everything. And I enjoyed WandaVision. I enjoyed Falcon Winter Soldier. But this is like what really got me hyped and pumped up. You know, I'm, I'm so pumped for this. And I think they executed it super well. Jonathan Majors just killed it. Like he's been, you know, in some recent stuff, which he's was great in like Lovecraft Country. But I remember even seeing him back in Last Black Man in San Francisco who... He just plays a very different role like in that movie and really just in all the different things. And he's so different in this, just like so eccentric, but Shakespearean. And just I'm just fixated on him the whole time. So it's just to introduce a character like that and then bring him in. It's like, dude, you got, yeah, keep him, lock him down, bring him in every movie. Just throw Jonathan Majors and his Kang and versions of Kang into whatever you want, really. Yeah. I've got one more thing. He's got one more thing. Bring it. All right. So um, when when Kang or when, yeah, when we're just going to say Kang, when Kang is uh, describing the events that happened and like the, you know, how he ended up where he was at and everything else. He's got the little, little display that he's shown yeah. to, to the Lokis. Um, I can't remember how he words it, but in the beginning of his spiel, he, he, um, he puts it in a way to where you don't know if he's the original person or not. Like he, he doesn't, he doesn't acknowledge. He even says like some vo- variant of myself, right? Right. And then at the end of the spiel, he was the original variant that did it. He's the one that contained it. And then he got pissed. Like you get, you get a glimpse. You just get a little sliver of him getting pissed i'm the one that fucking contained it i'm the one that did the beast i'm the one that did all of this and then it gets like a little loopy again so thank you you know what i mean um yeah uh but you get a glimmer of the fucking like piece of king that's gonna be fucking a little scary um and I'm not so sure that he is the original one he might not be the original one because he worded it differently in the beginning you know what I mean? So it makes you wonder because there is a difference there of how he announced that person and how he does it later on in the spiel. Um, so it's got my it's got my mind twisting. Anyways, that's all I got. That's that little tidbit I wanted to throw in there. Yeah, I I mean, whew, I just I didn't think it would I didn't think it would do this. You know, and and, and I mean that in the most like good way obviously like i just wasn't ready for it and uh you know when jonathan majors you know i guess it's like a door that like slowly opens and then you're like uh, what's going on in there who's that and you and you know we we keep up with things we know that jonathan majors has been cast as kang the conqueror and ant-man uh and the wasp quantum mania you know it's a big deal jonathan majors has been crushing it um uh, Lovecraft Country, uh, obviously, particularly. I still haven't seen The Last Black Man in San Francisco. Um, 
He's great in The Five Bloods. Like, this guy's good. He's great. You know, and, and it's another one. Um, I think to close the loop on what I started last episode, aka earlier today, you know, don't even worry about it. Uh, talking about Florence Pugh and Black Widow. You know, when Marvel casts someone, you know, like Florence Pugh or Jonathan Majors, like, man, like, I think Enrique, I think you said, you know, like, lock them up for like five five movies or whatever it is, you know, I'm like, yeah, do that because cause they're great. They're they're awesome and and they're they're going to own it uh, every time they show up on screen and they're the kind of actor that's that's gonna cost you a lot more money if you don't lock them up in the interim. Uh, I'll put it that way because they're gonna continue to blow up and continue to have amazing performances and and amazing films. And Jonathan Majors is absolutely that type. He's that caliber of performer. We've seen it in everything that that at least I've seen it in, in everything that I've seen him in. And here he's in for one episode, and I, I'm sure that the version of Kang the Conqueror that we're going to see in Ant-Man, and, and I'm thinking beyond because it's fucking Kang the Conqueror, is going to be vastly different than what we see here, who is he who remains, who's Immortus, whatever, blah, blah, blah. You know, but just this little bit that we saw got me unbelievably hyped for the future of the Marvel Cinematic Universe in a way that both WandaVision and the Falcon and the Winter Soldier did not. Because what I'll say is, God damn it, I loved WandaVision. I'm a big, big Scarlet Witch fan. I think Vision's a very cool character. I'm a big Elizabeth Olsen fan. And <laughs> knows that. It's not a spoiler. Um, <laughs> uh, but I, you know, I, I, I love that show. I loved what they did. I loved the conceit of the show, doing the, the sitcom thing. Um, you know, it was super fun. It was really cool. And I think it was a great show. I think it stuck the landing. I think it was really great. And and honestly, I think WandaVision is neck and neck with me, with Loki. You know, like, what's my favorite MCU uh, Disney Plus show that they put out so far? It's tough. But, man, you know, like this, this, the way that it paves the path for the future of the MCU breaking the, uh, the 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 universe i guess breaking the universe uh, and exposing the multiverse and causing a potential another multiversal war as they've put it uh this brings in one this brings in the what if scenarios to me you know this is what means that captain britain and t'challa star lord are all things i'm like yeah that's all part of the multiverse why is that not canon it's absolutely canon in my head like it should be canon you know does it mean it'll have an impact probably not but it could you know, that's the thing that Spider-Man, you know, with No Way Home. Okay, they're bringing in all the other, the the, the Spider-Man. Jamie Foxx is coming back and Alfred Molina is com- coming back. Like, okay, that all makes a lot more sense now. For, you know, because I think, I think especially with Spider-Man, I'm like, is it going to feel fucking weird if they're just suddenly doing Spider-Verse shit? I'm like, there's been no setup to this whatsoever. It's going to feel weird, blah, blah, blah. And to be fair, none of that has been officially confirmed other than just some of the casting choices. But to me, this lays the groundwork in a big, big way that like that doesn't feel so left field anymore. Like anything is possible at this point, you know, Uh, and I really think that the potential that that creates is actually very exciting and and very cool because I don't know what's coming next. Uh, You know, and a lot of times with with like what Marvel does, I can kind of get a pulse, you know, I I can get a finger on the pulse and like figure out like what's coming next what marvel what what's marvel up to like what are they thinking but even even thor love and thunder is is jane getting mjolnir is that a multiverse effect what's going on there you know there's just repercussions that i think that could reverberate in a way that that we haven't really expected or seen coming and i just think that's a very exciting and cool storytelling and i'm not saying that like i'm expecting all of those things to come to fruition the way that i expect them to but I, the thing is, but I don't really no way know. To know. There's no way to know. I don't know what's coming, and so I'm excited as anyone else to, to to see how they resolve a lot of these things. And you know, I'm sure Doctor Strange will probably put a band aid on certain things for a while. But Kang is coming in Ant Man. Like to me, Kang the Conqueror is not an Ant Man and the Wasp villain. He's not. <laughs> no disrespect. No disrespect, Mister Lang. You know what I mean? Like, but he's 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 a Thanos level threat. Uh, he could be. He, he should be, maybe. Unless um, the TVA exists in the quantum realm. So, yeah, I mean, and I don't know. I mean, to me, it's like, okay, is the Kang that we see in Ant-Man 
the Kang? Or is it another variant? Or is it a setup? And he's there for a lip there is bit, but he's not the main villain, and then he comes back and he's in Avengers four. Or no, good, we already got that. Avengers five. Um, you know what I mean? Like, how does that all play out? Uh and I love that there's so many unknowns at this point. Uh and I love that uh, Kevin Feige, Marvel Studios and company had the confidence to make Disney Plus the medium for which they just say, actually, you know what? Fuck it. You know, we're we're doing the thing. Uh, I, I just think it's really cool, you know, and and I made the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. reference earlier in terms of describing the production, production quality of one episode, but that's obviously not what this show is like. And Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. for the longest time was always riding on the coattails of the MCU. The Netflix shows were guilty of it as well, where it was a very one-sided relationship where if something happened in, 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 in Age of Ultron, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. went back and was like, all right, we got to explain how Nick Fury got the helicarrier. And now it's just like... Now that Marvel Studios has their hands on with these TV shows, it really feels like, no, 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 we want them to feel impactful. We want them to actually have consequence. And so, obviously, you know, we'll make a Spider-Man movie and we'll make a Doctor Strange movie. And I'm sure we'll get audiences up to speed because, obviously, it's a movie and we want it to be fairly self-contained. But for the fans of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, for the fans that are watching everything that comes along, we still want to reward them in some way. So... By watching these six episodes of Loki, you will benefit from, you know, you know, watching it and then you're going to go into the next thing and the next thing and the next thing and, and, and everything's going to kind of flow from one to the other. And I think that's just a really, really cool storytelling technique that they're doing, um, you know, and for whatever reason, Marvel seems to be the only production company, et cetera, that's that can pull it off. You know, they just they just there's nothing they, like they, it again. There's they nothing just have like their it finger on the pulse. Television. They get it. They get it. You know, right. So. I just think it's, it's just it's just it's just very cool to me. I think it's very exciting, um, and I think it's cool that you know again they just they just did it with this and they did it with goddamn Jonathan Majors coming in to play He Who Remains, Immortus, Kang, whoever you know, just just bold storytelling, and I think that it I think that it paid off in a, in a big way, and you know. I'm glad that there's a season two of Loki. Maybe that's my final thought on the show on season or episode six, season one, because obviously there's a lot that's left hanging, right? Uh, there's not really a proper post credits, which I was a little disappointed by. There's just an announcement. Loki's going to be back. Uh, okay, great. We hoped he would be back. Um, but a lot of shit is in flux right now. You know, Loki and Sylvie. Yeah, they got a nice passionate kiss in, but she sends him back to, God knows where, which is maybe a different, you know, it's clearly a different thing uh, where where he doesn't, where, where, where Mobius and B-15 have no idea who he is. Uh, there's, 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 there's the Planet of the Apes goddamn statue of uh, of Kang the Conqueror and not, uh, not the Timekeepers, you know, so that's a big deal. Mobius is not seen on a jet ski at any point in this episode, so obviously that means that the series can't be over. Um and Sylvie is kind of racked with, you know, she just kind of like crumples, right? You know, she's like she kills, she kills he who remains. She's 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 fulfilled her glorious purpose. Uh, I've taken down the TVA. They ruined my life. They stole my life from me, and I've I've killed the person responsible for putting the TVA into existence and controlling my life and preventing me from having free will. And what does that get me? And we don't know. What does that mean for Sylvie? We don't know. We don't. We don't know the answer to that, and and, and that's that's what a future season has to kind of answer is what what's next. What does Sylvie do? Like how? What is what impact does this have on her? Um, so there's a lot of tantalizing questions. So it's not the most self-contained series. I accept that because I know that Spider-Man, Doctor Strange, Loki season two lurks. I'm excited to see how they answer all the lingering questions that they have. But I will say that for what we got. It was very, very compelling. Very, very exciting stuff. So, anyway. Please, please, someone say something else. All right. Well, I think just aside from a great episode of the MCU, this was just a good episode of television, mm -hmm. I thought. It was super compelling. I mean, the show overall, I thought done, it did just, what was really well done. As we kind of talked about earlier, just every aspect was great. But even in this, like, this was... It, it was different in that they didn't choose to end it with this big CGI fight, right? They had, this was all pretty much dialogue and exposition heavily 
carried by Jonathan Majors, but even between Loki and Sylvie, it got it got pretty emotional. You know, I I was really feeling for them. They poured their hearts out, and then it she kind of like they kiss, but then she she kind of sets them aside, and that oh that was rough. Like you see the look on his face afterwards, and I'm like, damn, my boy Loki's been been through a lot. So does she kick him out? to the place he was before on the same timeline and Kang has since already conquered the TVA. Yeah. I feel like he's probably off on a different strand. Like, like I assume there's still a main timeline that everything will eventually probably get set to and all is well and good. But yeah, I feel like he's probably stuck off on a, on a, on a branch, you know, off on his own where no one knows who he is. And so, He's all alone. He's got to figure out, well, what the hell do I do now? But I don't know. See, I took you know, it as, maybe, maybe, I took it as, I don't know. you know, maybe, maybe not, like, maybe not, you know, th- there, there's an infinite version. There's infinite amounts of me and I'll see you again soon. She kicks him out. You know what I mean? And, and here he is and he's already a version of him has already become the the leader of the TVA like it, it was just like an in, it was an instant kind of thing because a, a version of Kings already seized the opportunity to to do it so I don't know we'll see how it works we don't know how fucking we don't know how the shit works with MCU you don't we don't know the rules That's we don't know the of rules it. of the game man so yeah exciting stuff uh, well that's fucking Loki guys. We did it. We'll just have to stay tuned. Stay tuned on that. So that is uh, Loki. Yeah. Whew. We've been recording I, a lot. I wasn't lying. I wasn't lying when we said how lot, we had a lot to unpack. And we've, we've been spending the greater part of the day recording. That's for sure. So uh, if it's not too burdensome, I might do another live edition of the Listener's Corner for you guys, if that's okay. Maybe our listeners might appreciate it, too. So, well... Without further ado, Anna Mattis is here to share her thoughts on Loki. I'm back. Um, this is a aside that you can cut later. Just this is a this is a picture, or maybe it won't get cut. But this is a picture of me, my I think it's my sophomore year of college, with a cardboard cutout of Loki <laughs> that my thesis advisor. Uh, keeps in her office. I, I'm pretty sure she still has it in her office. Um, but I have always loved Tom Hiddleston and Loki. And part of that was that uh, Tom Hiddleston was a classics guy. Um, and I was a, a Latin major and, you know, very active in the classics department and undergrad. So we all, everybody in that department loved Tom Hiddleston. Uh, plus he also went with a lot of Shakespeare, which is also like tied in with classics a lot. But uh, so I was very excited for Loki because I have always loved Loki. And so was a second episode where we get Tom Hiddleston speaking excellent Latin, excellent Latin. And like that does not happen in movies and TV because people say the pronunciation so wrong. All of these bar videos, everyone is saying it. The Latin phrase is wrong in when does he speak uh, in, Latin in the second episode? When they go to Pompeii. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So I was very excited. I think I cried. I think I might have cried um, just because it was so beautiful and, and so refreshing. Um, wow. So I was, and I actually was just watching an interview from like November 2019 where T. Hiddles is talking about Loki and like, oh, we're filming it next year and blah, blah. And they were talking about, you know, uh, they're when he first auditioned, he auditioned for Thor. Yeah. Oh, you guys probably already talked about that. Um, so my thoughts on Loki are, um, (laughs) I think overall I really liked it. I, I loved getting more Loki because I feel like every movie he's been in, I'm just like, I want more. Like I, I want to see him more. And, um, particularly, you know, Infinity War was devastating. (laughs) So I was very excited to have more. And I think I was a little worried before the series, you know, premiered that it was going to be, you know, kind of the old Loki who was more annoying and, and, you know, we'd watch him come so far and have so much growth. And so I was a little worried, but then, you know, having him 
watch his whole life happen in front of him um was really uh was really like I think it was great because it it brought him to where he was when we left him like when he died so that we could still see that Loki who who cared a little bit more and wasn't as cynical and and arrogant as uh as in the the first few movies that he appeared um the other thing that I, I did you guys talk about King Loki at all and how it never really happened yeah, so I was reading that the reason for that is they actually, those were supposed to be Asgard memories that they filmed, and it was supposed to appear in the episode where he's watching his life happen, and so they had, and they filmed them, and they said they were great, and they were really funny, and like, whatever, but because it was so close to Forget's death, uh, they decided, uh, Kate Heron, is that her name? She decided to cut them, because um, it just didn't work with the vibe, and I'm I'm kind of glad she did because I think that that moment did become more um, impactful. And um, I think my mainly just one fault uh, with with Loki is that um, I didn't like the finale. Um, I think it was a perfectly fine episode, but I think as a finale, it was disappointing to me. Um you know, part of it is like I love Jonathan Major, so that was exciting and and great. But uh, it most of the finale was just like him talking, um, and setting up other movies and other things we're gonna watch. And like I knew they had to do that, but I, I think in doing that they kind of forgot like the show is called Loki, <laughs> um, and it kind of felt like it wasn't about Loki anymore. And I think, you know. <laughs> Loki has all this growth, he tricks people, he comes back, he tricks people, you know, whatever, like, we have this back and forth, this this cycle over and over again, and this show kind of put him back to the beginning, and like I said, I appreciated that they brought him back to what he was, you know, when we last saw him pretty quickly, they didn't make us, like, sit around waiting, um, so then it was like, at the end, it was like, oh, we're gonna punish him again, we're gonna, we're gonna leave him alone and isolated, and, um, and so I was frustrated with that just because, uh, I think it's, you know, cliffhangers aren't inherently bad, but I think number one, I don't want all cliffhangers. I want a little bit of resolution uh, in a in a season finale, um, and also I think it uh, we didn't get that kind of moment of satisfaction. E- you know, even if it had been brief, and we'd had like that moment of satisfaction, and then like let's you know th- you know split everybody up and throw them into chaos and whatever. We never really had that moment. Uh, at least I didn't feel that moment. So I was a little frustrated with that. Um, but I think part of that was because, you know, the Kate Heron, you know, she, she's, it's, it, there's this quote of hers where she basically says that it was never planned to be more than one season and so it does make me wonder, were there other ending scenes? Did they do reshoots? You know, what happened there? Um, but I feel like that kind of might have altered how she wrapped things up um, and kind of gave us more chaos at the end. Um, so I didn't love how that ended. And I think I'm a little worried that we're going to have to wait like two years before we get another season to get more more there. Um, I just kind of hate that we were immediately splitting everybody up and... And there was no reunion of anyone, really. Um, so I didn't love that. But I think it did do a nice setup for everything that comes next and and teasing, you know, everything after this. Um, you know, I think, obviously, Doctor Strange is not really surprised that it's about the multiverse. <laughs> um, and, you know, everything with casting for Spider-Man has shown that's also going to be impacted from here. Ooh. But I think also, you know, Ant-Man and, um, you know, I doubt, I doubt, you know, because the only one Jonathan Majors has been announced for is Ant-Man, right? And, like, I doubt he's going to be, like, the actual big bad. Like, he's, I'm, my assumption is, like, that Kang is going to be the one that, like, discovers the multiverse um, and not, like, the evil, you know, <laughs> conqueror. Haha, <laughs> they said it. Um, the one thing I, I also where the end scenes I didn't like is there's an implication by the statue of Kang that Kang in, in this timeline that that Loki is now in Kang runs the TVA, but 
evil Kang runs the TVA. But the TVA should theoretically be like outside of the timeline. So it can't just be like the T like the TVA isn't in a certain timeline. It's outside of the timeline. So then, uh, then it makes me wonder, is it like future? Like, I don't know. Then it makes my brain hurt too much. Um, which is again, something I didn't, I didn't like <laughs> so much of, I don't want that in a, in a season finale. Um, what? I just lost it. I had a thought. I had a thought. I had tried to hold on to it for a little bit, and I lost it. Oh, sorry. That's why I interrupt. I interrupt people, and I, I'm, I'm finding out that that's rude. Um, <laughs> so I tried to hold on to it, but now I know why I interrupt people, because then I forget what the fuck I was thinking. So keep going. I'm sure I'll try to remember. <laughs> okay. I'll, I, I mean, I will try to remember. I, I I'm not sure I have, have too much more to say. Um, I think... You know, I think Loki... Oh, I got it. Oh, Not to cut you it. off, but to cut <laughs> Go you <for> off. It. <laughs> Go for it. I'll so, remember my thoughts. So. Jonathan Major says that the people that I want to run this thing just happens to come in two people. Right? Yeah. And and he... There was a, a, t- a time that passed, and then he says that he did not know what was going to happen next for whatever reason. Yeah. Right. We don't know what that reason is, but there was a there's there's some sort of reason why he did not know what was going to happen beyond a certain point. Um, but more importantly, he said that the, the thing came in two. The, it came in two people. He Loki was sent to the timeline to the TVA, the bureaucracy that that enforces the 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 timeline, right? Mm-hmm. And the person that wanted the free will is now in the seat of power for the timeline, right? So maybe it was all part of the game plan to put two people in charge because now there's there's a there's someone presumably bad at the head of the TVA based off the statue or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. And uh everything's running amok and now Presumably, the TVA would consult the one person that knows what the fuck's going on, which would be Loki. So maybe now Loki's in charge of the bureaucracy, and Sylvie is in charge of like the the whole thing. Does it make sense? Um, is what I said. Just did that come over right? Did it? Did, did. Yeah. No, I get what you're saying. I don't. I don't know if I think that because I think Sylvie. Like hates the TVA so much, she would not allow it to exist um, in a form where it was still doing what it was doing. Um, which seems to be what's happening in this, you know, other timeline where where Kang has established the TVA without, you know, talking about the Timekeepers or whatever. Um, but it also, I I think part of my thing with that alternate timeline is wondering if that's uh, Ren Slayer at all. Um, like trying to keep the TVA going in some way um, was also kind of one thought I had um, because she just, you know, fucking disappeared. Also, like, of course she was a principal. Of course she was. (laughs) Uh, So on the nose there. Yeah, that was. um, Yeah, but I think. uh, Oh, another thing. I am excited. Oh, yeah. Is do it. You say that you were uh, disappointed in, in where they left Loki. They left him by himself, and he didn't get that resolution. Yeah. But maybe there's the potential for more growth. Now he doesn't need someone else or other versions of himself to complete himself, and now he can have his... Uh, <coughs> this episode's been going on for a long time, so I done forgot the way, the, the way that it's worded by old Loki. Um, his, uh, his purpose. Glorious purpose. His glorious purpose. Now he can fix the shit on his own and he can have his own good mission to correct whatever's going on in that timeline that he's in right so now yeah. he, you know what i mean now he's on his own I, and he can he can spearhead his own purpose i do but i don't want him to be alone and i feel like kind of where his growth has been is that like he doesn't have to do everything alone like he has a brother and then it's like he has a friend in mobius and, you know, he has whatever the fuck Sylvie is to him. And then it's like, let's go somewhere where he has none of that. Um, so I, I don't. Yeah, I, that doesn't make me feel better about that. Um, yeah, I think he's fucking I, Loki. 
I just like I'm sick of Loki being sad. <laughs> I want him to have some happiness. <laughs> um, but I do wonder if he will, you know, give him some wine. Reported, He'll be happy. He would be in that. He would be in strange, right? Didn't you see you say you saw that reported? Yeah, I'll take that. I mean, it does feel like, you know, I think previously it was kind of like, okay, well, like whatever's on TV is like a lesser version and it doesn't feel super canon. And obviously like S.H.I.E.L.D. is not even canon <laughs> anymore, really. Um, but I feel like these shows are are more tied in and, and there's going to be an expectation now. Like if you go to see the next Marvel movie, you can't just have seen the last couple movies. You have to watch the TV shows, too. Um, so I, that does make me a little more confident that they'll also be willing to do stuff outside of it with Loki um, and then and then come back to the show. But yeah, Loki, uh, generally good. I found the finale disappointing, which I know that Colton did not. God, um, it was a I think it, fucking finale. I don't think it was a bad episode. I just think as a finale, it was... Uh, I, I it felt to me more like a penultimate episode and I was like, all right, what's the next one? And then there's nothing. Um oh, but yeah, give me give me T Hiddles and everything forever. Cause uh yeah, he's he great. He speaks good Latin. And, uh, he does. It's excellent. The pronunciation was so good. So good. So good. <laughs> um but yeah. Uh yeah. Loki. You guys should write your wedding vows in Latin. Um, no. <laughs> Because there's no way that Colson would pronounce it correctly. <laughs> it's not a chance. A lot of practice. Mm. He pronounces most mad. of the I'm names make, right. He's already mad. I'm going to make him learn how to dance. So he can do that. He can do the. Uh, he can do the. Uh, the fucking American cycle. American psycho dance. Uh. It's hip to B square. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, is this newspaper? Listen, you do the you do the dance part. I'll do the murder part of you. Oh my god! Oh my god! That's brutal. Anna doesn't know this because I don't think she's looked at the criminal law section of bar prep too 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 closely. But uh, murder section two two a section two two a paragraph six <laughs> se- subsection three yeah. a <laughs> murder 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 it says uh star star very bad do not commit yeah, uh do not recommend uh yeah but it's allowed in new york and that's where we'll be so all good uh, it, in new york in new york it is legal to murder floridians so well that probably happens more in new york you can just uh dump a body in the hudson right i'm gonna go with the mohawk but that flows to the hudson eventually so well, jokes on you. I was born in Alaska. So anyway, you're a Floridian. <laughs> well, 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 well. Only well, for a little well, bit. Well, 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 well. All right. Well, thank you, Anna, for for hopping on, hopping, uh, you know, g- giving some 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 takes on Loki, sharing your thoughts. We appreciate it. Um, we gotta go to bed. Uh, now. Has, has anyone been up to anything since uh, since uh, since a couple hours ago? Anyone want to share what they had for dinner? Uh, anything, you know, for the catching up section on this episode? Yeah, I watched some really riveting, um, videos about wills and estates and, um, just so interesting learning about the, the ways I'm going to screw over Colton when I inevitably die and leave him nothing. (laughs) Um, but, uh, yeah, yeah. I can't wait till the you know, I, your will becomes relevant and hopefully uh, the lightning that, oh my God. What the fuck was that? Did you just hear that? Or a scorpion. What was that? Okay, sorry. Um. Anyway, just looking forward to the sweet release of death, hopefully before the bar exam so I don't have to take it. But anyway, I'm going to go back and, and listen to Dr. Herbert Snibbert, or whatever the fuck his name is, talk about trusts. Okay, bye. What about you guys? Had a good dinner? Been up to anything in the interim? I didn't eat anything else you want to talk about? Burn. Very bad. Right <laughs> but you got nicotine. Nicotine for dinner. Nicotine, always, always a, a good dinner there. But uh, I can give some, I can give something. All right, go for it. So I have gone back to the movie theaters. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
and uh, I've been watching some stuff. So the first okay. movie that okay. I saw back was In the Heights. Uh, that was a great, great experience. And you you mentioned this, Andrew, in the in the podcast about the 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 issue with the like true representation of uh, Washington Heights as a community mm-hmm. and. You know, I think that's that's a very fair criticism, but it doesn't detract from the rest of the movie. You know, this is still a very deeply rich like movie in the in the Latino cultural sense and just like the the things they tackle are very real and I, I appreciated that. And aside from that, I mean the music is fantastic. I mean I think we're all Lynn Manuel Miranda fans here and you know, actually enjoy a little more when he's not singing. Like, I don't know. Like, I don't mind as much as some people, but the, you know, Anthony Ramos and the whole crew just, just killed it. Really, really loved the movie. Uh, definitely brought me to tears at a, f- a few points, but it was a great movie to go back in theaters to. Just, just vibrant with colors and music. It's was, it was fantastic. I really loved it. We also went to go see A Quiet Place Part 2, which was uh, another great theater experience, you know, with the suspense and everything. So that was that was fantastic. And and then, of course, Black Widow uh, did get to see in theaters. No IMAX yet or any, any Dolby, so I'm looking forward to that. I feel like I might have my mind blown a little bit when I watch something in IMAX. So that that's going to be a rich experience. It's been quite a while since I've done that. But aside from that, I don't think I've mentioned this on the podcast before. It's been a while. I finished this several months ago. But I watched Ted Lasso on Apple Plus or whatever it's called. And it was fantastic. I like highly recommend it. So he, it's Jason Sudeikis as a soccer football coach where he's actually originally like a American football coach. And then they, they bring him in to coach soccer in England and it the the sports of it are fine but that's not where like the strength of the show is the show is like just has so much heart like i just found myself as like really caring really getting invested in it it just felt so real in certain things that it tackles man a great show and and hilarious you know very funny like jason sudeikis is just like knocking it out of the park as ted lasso so highly highly recommend that show to anybody Oh, and I just started Mayor of Easttown, which I know you talked about. Uh, I've only seen one episode so far because Easley and I started watching it, and then I had to go to sleep. And then I wake up the next morning, and she's finished the whole series. <laughs> or I just stayed up and watched however many episodes <laughs> left behind. were left. But at least the first episode w- was good. So she said she would go back and rewatch it with me. So we just got to get back on that but i'm i'm looking forward to to actually watching that one and they have a great cast just wow just from what i've seen so far really really impressive and the thing i th- think was interesting is there's that snl uh <laughs> skit about mayor of east town i think it's called like dirter murder or something it's just making fun of like pennsylvania accents and pennsylvania things and like gritty makes an appearance at some point but it's it's pretty funny just to to have seen that and then go back and watch the show and they're all like water, but um, yeah, it's 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 funny being local and 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 watching that. Although it's it's kind of interesting. Like there, I was looking. I don't think East Town is a real place, but in a lot of the places where it's filmed, it's near like media and everything, which is like a very nice, like slightly bougie. Uh, suburb of Philly, <laughs> so I don't quite understand uh, how how where that is, but you know, they're they're like right outside the city, but also like kind of you know inland towards uh, Maine, PA. So so I don't know. I thought that was a little strange, but I'm sure there there are cities like that just around. But uh, it was a little little funny to me. Nice, Andrew. Anything? Anything? anything you? Forgot to mention on a previous episode that we recorded earlier. Um, well, since we've recorded the last episode, I uh, I've gotten considerably more sleepy. <laughs> it's it's pretty late. Even f- I mean, 
generally speaking, it's especially late for you, I guess is what I'll say. So I, I won't for you know, I I won't fault you. Uh, I'm not snoring yet, though, so yeah, obviously true. I've got a little bit of gas left in the tank. <laughs> you got a little bit more injury than you did <laughs> once upon a time. We don't, have to, we don't have to talk about that episode anymore if you don't want. But, um, all right. Um, well, on my end, I, I don't have anything much uh, to offer. By the time this goes up, theoretically, I'll be sipping a beer uh, by a pool in Florida. Maybe I'll be hanging out with Andrew. Maybe we'll be recording an episode. I don't even know. But um, August, August, August is going to be great. It's going to be wonderful. I'm willing it into existence. The bar is a distant memory. I'm hanging out in Florida for a week. I'm going to Vermont for for, for maybe close to a couple of weeks. I'm having a great time. So right about now, I'm having a great time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I'm saying that for, for the future version of me that's editing the episode and thinking, yeah, this is pretty good. This is pretty good. Yeah, you're, yeah, yeah you, you got it right. You got it right. So anyway, that's what's up. Uh, and so that's this episode. Thank you all for listening. If you enjoyed what you heard, please spread the word. If you want to support us on Patreon, patreon.com slash watch review repeat is the website. You can get early access to all of our regular episodes. Unfortunately, this is the last in the string of the episodes that were recorded before I took the bar, which is to say that hopefully... Uh, beyond this point uh there'll be a more regular release schedule so the early access is not as much of a boon but uh it's still very helpful um the episodes usually go up within a a couple days of recording and editing sometimes takes a little while especially when you got other shit on your plate so uh it's still helpful and uh you'll have timed exclusive access to bonus episodes as well that uh, hopefully we'll be able to put at least one out uh, this year that's our goal put out one for the calendar year of 2021 uh website is watch of your uh and you can find helpful links to our social media accounts there in the top right corner uh or you can just uh go on twitter and search for at wrr pod and follow our page that way um uh follow our twitter i don't know is it a page i don't know Facebook, we have a page. If you just search for Watch of Your Repeat, you can follow us that way. Um, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, uh, send those our way. Watch of Your Repeat at gmail.com. Intro, outro track, Mechanolith by Kevin McLeod, licensed under the Creative Commons by Attribution 3.0 license. Enrique, it has been a pleasure having you on for a couple episodes in a row. And I... I I I just out of the I imagine you're going to be here at least one time for the next five months because there's a shit ton of Marvel. There's a stuff lot of Marvel stuff out. to cover about 2021. I did want to say there's something positioned on your wall that right now just looks like make you look like you have anime styled hair right now, and I think it's great. I think <laughs> totally. it's great. Um, I just wanted to put it out there while I while I thought of it because I saw it out of the corner of my eye, and I was just like, this man just went straight out of My Hero Academia. I don't know anything about that show. But, uh, but there we go. He fixed it. He fixed it. He moved a little bit. But anyway, uh, it's been a genuine <laughs> pleasure having you on. And uh, we do look forward to having you on uh, for, for Shang-Chi, uh, maybe What If, uh, all the Marvel stuff, whatever else that comes along. Uh, like Andrew said, there's plenty to come this year. So, uh, so yeah, it'll be great. And, uh, and a big, big thank you. No, nah, thanks so much for having me. And I'm um, always glad to join in on, on these Marvel projects but not sure what was going on with uh, my hair back there. But uh, yeah, no, thanks. Thanks for having me. Looking forward to the next one. Well, Andrew, it's time for you to retire. Find the sweet mercy of sleep and oh. send the listeners on home. And Enrique, thank you for coming on. Good night, everyone. Take care now. Bye bye then. Later's on the Menjay. <laughs>